Black Oni. Thank you for watching Black Oni Podcast. This is Geralt. I gotta get back to the path now. Enjoy. You're now listening to the Black Oni Podcast. is going on both youtube and itunes and whatever other platform you use to listen to this podcast i am your host will black only wiggins and i am joined today by two familiar faces and one face that is new to our show but not new to everyone else <laughs> so uh the first guest i'd like to introduce is uh dave aka soil aka so what's up <laughs> and then we have uh chris otherwise known as it's yoru hey what's up guys and we have none other than Doug Cockle. Hello, how are you guys? How is everybody? <laughs> Doing well, man. Doing well. Mm-hmm. Um, and for people at home who don't, aren't already in the know, uh, Doug is most notably recently, uh, you know, game of the year, you know, whatever, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, did the voice for Geralt of Rivia. Um, he did a voice in Dead Nation. <clears throat> He played in Captain America. Actually, let me bring up the IMD because I'm going to forget everything <laughs> that you've done. But, I mean, like, you're, you're fairly accomplished in terms of, like, your presence in things that I love um, and things that many people love. So, um, again, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, no problem. Right? It's, it's a pleasure. This is so, so cool. <laughs> so, <laughs> um <laughs> As our beginning, as our start to the podcast, we do something called our uh, icebreaker. <laughs> and our icebreaker for this episode is, what was your best surprise for 2015? And what is your most anticipated surprise or release for 2016? In the gaming world or just in general? Um, let's say gaming and in general. Yeah, let's, go, let's do a little bit of both. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll just do gaming, well, but if you have something in mind for, for in general, definitely uh, definitely share it. I, d- I don't know that I had a big gaming surprise in 2015. I think um, I think it was a little bit surprising that, um, that CD Projekt pushed back the release date of The Witcher twice. That was a surprise. Mm-hmm. I kind of wasn't surprised about the first one, but the second one was a bit of a surprise. Mm-hmm. But I completely understood it. You know, I was I was like, yeah, that you know, they want to put out the game right. They don't want to just throw something out there that then needs massive, you know, massive updates and stuff like that, mm-hmm. fixes and everything else. So I thought they made a, a good call there, but it was a surprise. Yeah. Um, uh, any other surprises? No, not a gaming surprise. No. Okay. Okay. No. <laughs> That's legit. Um, and the other part of the question was, what am I looking forward to? Yeah. In 2016, like what's your most anticipated release in 2016? Gosh, you know, I have no idea. I, to be honest, we're only a couple weeks into 2016, That's and true. I have been all over the websites and stuff like that, looking at what's coming up. Yeah. But, uh, uh, oh, what am I looking forward to? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> there's, 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 there's so much Put coming this spot. year, and like so much we don't really know that much about, so it's kind of hard to... I know. Well, I'm kind of, I'm really excited about this VR stuff coming out, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's really exciting. I don't know if I'm going to spend 600 pounds to buy an Oculus Rift or anything like that, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's it's real soon. Yeah. But, because um, you know how these things work, you know, it tends to be the first iteration of anything. It's kind of, you know, iffy. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, you get the second version and the third edition and everything else, and then it gets better and better. Yeah. So I'm kind of, uh, it's that's one of those watch this space things for me. I really want to see where the VR goes Mm -hmm. i think that's i mean that is absolutely the next the next thing in gaming isn't it yeah i i think so i mean i don't know (laughs) i have no idea I mean, I've mentioned Oculus Rift. I should, I, I could mention other things as well. That's just the one that came to mind. But you know, we'll see because there's three different ones coming out, aren't there? Or four? Mm-hmm. Like the one by Sony, which is, is it still Morpheus, or did they change it yet? It's probably it's, VR. Uh, yeah. Just PlayStation VR, yeah. and then there's um, I'm trying to think. <laughs> Obviously, Oculus yeah. Rift is the most. Obviously, popular Oculus, one. and there's yeah. two other ones. You are right. There's Shoot. um, there's Never. like the HTC. Um, yeah. Headset. What That's was right. it? Oh, yeah. um, one of my friends is talking about it. Um, isn't the, the, vibe? Vibe? Is yeah, that it? It might be that. Either that it, or HTC Vibe. Uh, yeah. H- sounds kind of right. Yeah. 
Yeah, but like there's it. like four different ones coming out. Yeah. So you know it's going to be but, like a you know head, heads on, bom, 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 see who wins the the race for best best thing. But <laughs> uh, we know we'll see what happens. I'm looking forward to trying it sometime. You know. It's, uh, yeah. I tried. Really cool. I tried the Rift before at a at a PAX and somewhere else, and I tried it out, and it was like really cool. But it was like one of the earlier development kits. It wasn't like the full release. Yeah. So. Yeah, I saw one of the, the the kind of beta versions. Uh, one of the one of the sound studios I work at, they've got they've got one there. They're testing it out, and um, I I nearly asked them if I could give it a go, but I, we just didn't have time, so I didn't get I didn't get the opportunity. But <laughs> uh, so it was like right there in front of you, like ah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what about you, Dave? What is your uh, what are your answers to this? Oh, the question. Yeah, um... best surprise for twenty fifteen in. Um most anticipated release? Um, I guess gaming-wise, I'd go with um, Dying Light. Dying Light was my biggest surprise of 2015. Yeah. That was an awesome zombie game out of left field. Yeah, I agree. And then um, for next year, mm, my most anticipated release, because me and Chris were just talking about this, I'm still going to go with Doom. Yeah. Like, I can't wait for Doom. <laughs> Like I've been waiting and waiting and waiting. I just want to play that game. Yeah, that's just did you me. play the original? Oh yes, loved yeah, it, loved yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, the original was super classic. I, I I played a lot of that. Yeah, the last it time it drove had... me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Old school fun though, man. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was great. I just I'm terrible at games. I love them. I absolutely <laughs> adore games. Mm. I'm terrible at them though. I always get killed. I die all the time. <laughs> Doom like, is hard because you couldn't really like aim you just kind of like yeah turned and then hope that the person up was the person you were shooting at <laughs> <laughs> i just remember there were all these secret doors and stuff like that as well so you know and i i was just terrible at finding them so i just yeah. run around the same level over and over and over again going i don't know what to do now yeah <laughs> it really wasn't easy <laughs> um what about you chris uh, I'm sorry. The uh, the video co- uh, dropped like midway. I didn't. I, oh yeah. I don't know. <laughs> um, what was your best surprise for 2015 and your most anticipated release for 2016? Uh, gaming wise, uh, the best surprise. Wow! Wow! I I can go before you if you if you yes, don't have please. the answer right away. <laughs> yes, please go right ahead. My biggest surprise was my my disappointment in Batman: Arkham Knight. I was. Huh. What uh, we just talked about? <laughs> we were just talking about it. <laughs> Because I was playing it and loving it and loving it. And I was like, oh my god, like this brings back all the memories of playing like Arkham City and Arkham Asylum. Like it felt so awesome. And then like there were things that were happening constantly that were really like nagging at me. I was like, this is souring my experience a little bit. And I, I thought about it a little more and a little more. I was like, this is really starting to suck right now. <laughs> so my biggest surprise was like how disappointed overall I was with, with Batman. I think it came down to like the reveal of the Arkham Knight. Um, some of the lack of like boss battles, some of the repetitiveness that happened as a result uh, of like oh, okay. the implementations they added, and yeah. like to get the true ending, you had to get like two hundred and fifty six Riddler trophies. And I was just like, <laughs> this game is like making me mad. <laughs> <laughs> It was that was that was a very disappointing um, function of the game. I guess it's like, oh, in order to fight the Riddler, you must get all these impossible like trophies. And there were like two boss battles in the game, so it's like to yeah. get that one, the third one, you had to like do all that. I'm like, come on, guys. Did you finish that? Did you finish that? And did <laughs> no. you finish that? No. Nope. Okay, you can't continue. Nope. <laughs> and you need it for the, the ending. The yeah. The... Yeah. Exactly. I still I, loved it. There were a lot of things I loved about that game. Don't get me wrong, but yeah. um, I was just disappointed. I guess I was just expecting too much. I think that's what we all were, especially with Rocksteady. I mean, yeah. come on, they came at it, and we yeah. saw what Origins did, and so we were kind of like left, left wanting more, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Um, I guess my most anticipated release is Horizon. Ooh. Really? Yeah. Zero Dawn. Well, oh. it's it's between that and Paragon, honestly. Like, I think mm. those two games are. Huh. Well, okay, I lied. There's another game that I'll, I'll talk about later, but <laughs> <laughs> I think one. in terms of like as like a as a definite like it's most likely going to be really cool it's going to be horizon because that i mean it's like an action rpg set in the future with like crazy robotic dinosaurs i'm still trying to figure out how that dynamic works and like why they're dinosaurs but that's part of the fun and, and they're and they're fighting them with like bows and arrows and stuff yeah. like that you're yeah. like what what exactly like i have so many questions <laughs> what is this? like i want to i want to know 
the um the demos made it look amazing yeah. without a doubt it <laughs> does could, it looks uh, incredible you mm-hmm. could take off the 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 the, uh, the gatling or the the gatling gun from the from one of the dinosaurs and shoot him with them I'm like what what is this <laughs> <laughs> so what about you chris Big okay surprise most anticipated I mean, everyone knows I'm a huge Final Fantasy nutcase, so it was definitely on uh, the release of uh, Final Fantasy uh, 15, the demo. Mm. That was, it was so limited in what you could do, and it was only a taste of it, but oh my god, it was, it was everything I've been waiting for the greater part of a decade for. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah we, it was, it was it's unbelievable. It's literally been a decade. <laughs> yeah. A long time. Yeah. Well, nice. <laughs> I'm not going to get into that. I'm going to have like PTSD flashbacks of that. <laughs> yeah. Every E3. But what about, what about your most uh, – is that – that was your surprise or that was your most anticipated? That was my surprise. My, the most anticipated right. for 2016. As... <laughs> no, no, I'm not going to follow up. double down. <laughs> <laughs> we were just talking about that. If, uh, but no. Uh, I'm, I, 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 uh, there's so many games coming out. But I mean if I had to just choose one – yeah, I think it's um, Mighty Number no. Nine comes out this year, right? Oh yeah, so yeah, yeah. Really look successor to Mega Man. <laughs> That's I. Oh, Will knows how how big of a Mega Man fan I am, and oh, I just want to play it. It looks so good. I mean, he's putting his heart and soul into it, and it just feels like an, an like an like an original Mega Man uh, game. Oh, it's wonderful! Mm. Can't wait. That's what I'm waiting for. <laughs> cool. That's awesome. Hopefully February. <laughs> Please, hopefully, <laughs> please no surprise. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the part of the podcast where we <clears throat> discuss. Um, if we have a special guest like Doug, we will uh, do an interview. So I want to get to know you. Is the title of this segment of the podcast. Um, and the first question that I'd like to ask is kind of the obvious question. The thing that most people probably start their their interviews off with. Um, is how did your career in acting start? Not just voice acting, but acting in general. Oh, man. Well, if you ask my mom, she'll say it started in the living room when I was about eight. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but no, I, 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 went to, um, I went to university. I, I, I went to uh, Virginia Tech and majored in theater arts and specialized in acting and, um, and minored in English there. So I mean, that's kind of where it started. I, was, I was originally went to, um, went to college, and I was... Um, I was a pre-med biology major. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I was going to be a doctor. But I'd done acting and drama and stuff throughout high school, and I always loved it. And I wasn't doing so well in chemistry. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> and, I was, and, you know, it's one of those easy. life moments when you kind of go, what do I, where do I really want to be in 20 years' time, you know? And I just didn't see myself in a white lab coat writing out prescriptions or whatever it was. I just didn't see it. Mm-hmm. And um, But I could see myself kind of you know doing something a little different and it was a little bit scary i i, I when i thought about changing my major i i uh, i called my dad uh, my mom and my dad but it was my dad i was talking to at the time and i told him what i was thinking about and he said uh son if you ch- decide to change your major just be careful those people lead an alternative lifestyle <laughs> <laughs> and i was like okay whatever <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, that, that's kind of where it started because I decided to change my major and that was essentially the beginning of my career because, you know, that was a big, big decision to make. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I, I, I graduated uh, from undergrad, went to Seattle for two or three years, spent some time there, worked professionally there for a bit, and then went back and did grad school. And then for some weird reason, well, my wife is English, uh, British, um, but for some weird reason, we decided to move to the UK just for a year, just because uh, <laughs> her family was still over here and stuff like that. So we we sold everything in the US, came over to the UK, and that's when my career really kicked off. Wow. Wow. Yeah, so. So what, what was it about moving to the UK that really made things kick off that way? Well, you know, it's one of those things where if I had stayed in the US, I have no idea what would have happened, you know, mm. because I didn't do it. So I, how do I know what would have happened? Right, right. Um, I, I like to think I'm a good actor, so I think I, I would have done something. <laughs> yeah. But, um, you know, I came to the UK and very quickly uh, found myself um, in demand in auditions because I was a genuine American. Oh, okay. Oh. UK to film and that. So, uh, I mean, I, 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 I 
talked myself into a, a role in a play over here at the York Theatre Royal as the gentleman caller in The Glass Menagerie by Tennessee Williams. And that was great. You know, fantastic theater. Met a whole bunch of cool people, including Honor Blackman, you know, um, one of the one of the Bond girls. You know, she's she's fantastic. That's cool. Um, <laughs> but, uh, um, yeah, I, I, I ended up auditioning for a television series called Band of Brothers. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> I, I saw that. We saw that. Yeah. I didn't get a role in it at first, but uh, the casting director liked me, and she invited me back in to read opposite the actors who were still auditioning. And um, so I did that for just about six months, and I was reading to people and you know, the casting director. And finally, the, the, one of the executive producers, Tony Toe, um, had a series of auditions, you know, like the fifth and sixth callback for some of the guys. Um, he, he said, I've oh got, got this, this role that's uh, on Maloney. Are you interested? I said, Yeah, <laughs> of course I am. Yeah. You know, so but, but, yeah, you know, I was a bit older. I was like 20, I was 29, 29 or 30 when I was auditioning for Band of Brothers. And all the guys that were auditioning for that were in their early 20s or late teens because that's the age of the guys who were, you know, in, in real life. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was just my age that was kind of keeping me up. But Fa- Father Maloney, was that little bit older, so it actually worked out really well. So yeah, that was that was kind of where my career really kicked off. Wow. But in terms of games, that's a whole different story. Right. Whole path, you know. That's so <laughs> cool. And so, I guess that leads right into our next question: Is how soon in to your career did you really start doing voice acting for for games or for for anything? You know, I did a little bit of voice acting in the States, but it wasn't for games or anything like that. I'd never even thought about games. Mm. I, I loved games. I played games, but I never thought about voice acting for games. When I was uh, when I was in The Glass Menagerie, I invited a whole lot of agents to come and see it because I didn't have an agent at the time. Mm. And this one agent came and saw it and liked what I was doing, didn't know what to do with me as I because uh, I was an American in England. Um, but she ended up putting me up for this um, this role in a in a game called Independence War Two: Edge of Chaos. It was the main character um, Cal who I was put up for, and she was just trying it out. And this mm. little voice studio called Outsource Media they're a lot bigger now, but at the time there, there were like two people running the show, and uh, they were based out of Harrogate up in the north of England. And I was in York, so we weren't far away. Mm. So um, he agreed to see me. I went over and I, did, I auditioned, and I got the job. So that was the first time I'd ever done anything with games uh, in terms of you know, voiceovers. I just walked in, read a bunch of stuff. Uh, Mark S. Dale, the, the guy who was directing the, the production and, and owned the company, uh, directed me a, a bit. And um, you know, we did some different things, and then he cast me, and I went in and did it. <laughs> and from there, it just kind of rolled, you know. They kept bringing me in for other auditions, you know. Other roles happened, and it just developed. That's amazing. That's really cool. Yeah. What is your absolute favorite role to play in movies or television or games? It can be either one of those things. One but... I have played, or or one I would like to play. Or... Well, that dream, that that question is coming up. That's so, coming up. Yeah. <laughs> so what I have played. Um. Yeah. Well, you know, I'd, I'd be completely remiss if I didn't say Geralt. Yeah. <laughs> but but yes. that's partly because, I mean, Geralt's not the most dynamic character mm-hmm. that I've ever played. But um, what's really cool about playing him is I've played him for 10 years and across three games. So I've actually, I've, and it's rare as an actor to be able to do that with anything. Yeah. Yeah. Because mostly what you're doing is you're you know you're jobbing in and out and you know you, you're you're there for three weeks or a month or a day or whatever it is and then you go away. Um, but this has been a ten year relationship, so you know when I really look back, it's it's that it's the development of the role, the development of the voice, the development of the character, my relationship with the developers, with the sound studios. You know, all the people I've met, you know, friendships I've made and all that stuff. It's all tied in with this Geralt character. Mm-hmm. And um, so I have to say that he's probably my favorite character to play. That's but, so cool. uh, you know, for that reason. But the one that I, it's not a media thing. It's a stage thing. I was in a play called um, uh, Burn This at um, Lancaster, uh, Duke's Theatre Lancaster. And um, I played the gay roommate, Larry. 
And um, it was so much fun. I had a blast in that play. I just enjoyed the character so much. Mm. And... Um, just had a, you know great time with it, and and what you know I tried not to take the piss out of it or anything like that. You know I tried very hard to <laughs> to, to develop a, a very real, very truthful character, yeah. and um, people did comment on that. So I was very proud of that, but I also enjoyed it because he was a funny guy. Yeah, as a character, he's just funny. Yeah, so <laughs> that's so I cool. Really enjoyed that. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Would you say? One of the things that this is not even in the uh, agenda. This is a question that I've been like thinking about for a while, and I can imagine being kind of a challenge for for portraying a character like Geralt because you know he's got the gravelly voice, of course, and I know that oh, over time that can hurt your your voice box a little bit. But um, it must have been really interesting and difficult to kind of convey this this kind of stoicness, um, but also kind of making the character interesting because like. I'll, I'll be listening in on the conversations that are happening in The Witcher, and like, they say that witches are supposed to be emotionless, mm -hmm. but it's very oh man, <laughs> it's very clear that uh, Geralt has emotions, and you know he 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 tries to be stoic, um, but there's times when he's like really invested in in a situation or a scenario, and he wants to do the right thing. That's always been kind of ingrained, or or do what he thinks is kind of the just thing to do. So, um, yeah, what is that? experience of kind of like trying to teeter on the edge of both of those been like it's it, it it can be frustrating to be honest because as an actor i really want to get into the high drama you know yeah, uh, yeah. i want to play with stuff you know but um but also it, it's, it's been a real challenge because it, finding ways to allow just through the voice Geralt to have uh, a, a three-dimensional existence while at the same time I'm being directed to take out as much emotion as I possibly can. Hmm. Uh, it was very challenging, and sometimes it's frustrating because you know the, you're, you're trying to achieve something that that is against every every bone in your body. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but um, but at the same time, there's something really satisfying about it. And um, yeah, I think he. I think that the key to Geralt is that it's not that he's emotionless or that any of the witches are emotionless. I mean, if you look at the other witchers, Vesemir, mm -hmm. um, you mm -hmm. know, some of the other guys, um, they're not emotionless. Correct. I think it's more just that they have to compartmentalize what they're doing. It's like, you know, it's like somebody going, going into a theater of war today, you know, they put on the battle gear and they go in to fight mm -hmm. and they have to just go, this is what I'm doing. You know how I feel about this has to wait till later. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So I think oh, to wow. a certain extent, what you don't see in The Witcher is the times when Geralt is sat in the in the portal loo out back, going. <laughs> 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 I don't know that he ever does that, but you know, <laughs> you never know. <laughs> in in those private moments off camera, outside of the game, I'm sure Geralt has his moments you know <laughs> what are you bottle of whiskey <laughs> yeah. you know yeah. packet of Canadian chocolate chip coffee. cookies duvet yeah. watching <laughs> sex in the city or something i don't know oh my God. The, the equivalent of sex in the city at the time was <laughs> sex in novigrad <laughs> yeah yeah exactly <laughs> and it, it's always been weird my baron's children <laughs> it, was, it was always like i was always confused about that playing through the game because i was like I was seeing all the witcher, all the witchers kind of interacting, and I was like, "These guys, like, I guess it's a myth in the in the in the mythos, right? It's like this. Their their myth is that they don't have emotion, and then when they come by, they're like, "Oh, you really don't have emotion." It's like, no, he actually is doing the right thing here. <laughs> um, what is your dream role? My dream role. Uh... You know, there's not a specific one. I could name a lot of roles I'd love to play. Mm -hmm. uh, and most of them are in the theater. Okay. Really. Because I, I, I grew up on the theater. You know, I'm, I was trained as a theater actor. And, you know, the, my great love is live performance. But I do love television and film and voiceover work and all of that as well. It's all great. It's all wonderful. But, you know, my real passion is live theater performance. Um, I, I think... I mean, I could say all kinds of things. I'm a little old to play Hamlet now. I would have loved to play Hamlet. Um, I'm probably about 20 years from King Lear. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's things like that. You know, the, the classics. Yeah. Um, but I think, I think, 
what I really would like, I don't have a dream role. I think I have a dream situation where um, I would love to work with a really, really great director and work on a role that becomes part of a film or a television series or whatever it is that becomes iconic. And The Witcher is kind of like that, actually. But I, you know, yeah. I, and Geralt is a, is is like that. Mm-hmm. So I, I have done that to a certain extent. But I would really like to do that. I'd like to do that in film. I've been watching all these interviews about the Hateful Eight, mm. Quentin, <laughs> yeah. you know, and stuff coming out. I'm just going, oh man, I would love to have been in that film. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. Just yeah. you know, I, I really, really brilliant iconic director with all these fantastic characters and these other actors who are so good and so passionate i don't care what the role is i want to do that yeah <laughs> yeah that sounds like a good time yeah it sounds like a very good time i think uh i remember uh both chris and dave had really good questions too that they wanted to ask i wanted you guys to to uh to ask those questions i can remember chris you can go ahead uh, of course um <laughs> <laughs> One of my questions was um, uh, at the time I didn't know that um, that uh, well at the time I was wondering did you ever actually work with any of the the motion capture suits or the mocaps? Like no, the- and I re- it's one of the yeah no I haven't I have I've never done that in any game. Um, I would love to though. I mean it's one of the it's one of those little you know bucket list career-wise kind of things <laughs> you know? um i would love to do some motion capture i was watching uh, benedict cumberbatch doing smog the dragon yeah have you seen that video yeah, yeah. it's brilliant he's i mean he's great <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean, that, he's that's wonderful it's about, you know it's about fully committing to something that you know is going to be rendered completely differently but you know it's about giving the performance to base that rendering on exactly um, yeah, so that's that's so exciting. I haven't done it yet. Not yet, Chris, but uh, fingers crossed sometime soon. You will, hopefully. <laughs> if you're watching this, make sure you get dug on for some motion capture stuff because I was just thinking about Jeez. that question. I was like, that would be a perfect thing to ask now because you're talking about the performance and like, you know, being exactly. on stage and, and the, the well, actual us. presence of the character in addition to the voice, that'd be like a perfect combination. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I have friends who 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 do it, and um, and they they just say it's it's amazing, an amazing experience. That's so cool. That's wonderful. Dude, that's sick. <laughs> I hope you get um a role with a uh, with a with a large mocap, you know, sequence and everything, where it just recognizes your facial expressions. You bring it to life. It becomes you know you in that suit. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh, it'd be fun. <laughs> you know they're coming out with a Witcher movie, and I thought, well, they've probably got some CGI monsters in there. Maybe I can be a monster in the, in the <laughs> Witcher. <laughs> That'd, be <cool. laughs> That'd be really cool. That'd be wonderful. Dude, that'd be sick. <laughs> and uh, Dave, you had a you had a question as well. I mean, it was more off the top of my head. It was um, so. What's it like being forever linked to the phrase "Come on, Roach"? <laughs> so I, I must have heard that I don't know how many times over the dozens and dozens of hours i played that game <laughs> you know, somebody said something weird on twitter maybe it was you david i don't know <laughs> uh said something about uh, they, they like slowing up and speeding down Geralt on roach because they like, they like hearing him go whoa slow down whoa slow down. oh speed up come on roach come on <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> I'm gonna do that next time I live stream. Just keep doing that over and over again. <laughs> I think somebody out there is having a very interesting time with Roach. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh man. Um, what? what is your favorite game series to play? My favorite game series to play, or it could just be favorite game in general. But I, I limit. I put it to series in case it was a series of them. Do you know, I, I don't have as much time as I would like at the moment to play mm-hmm. games at all. And when I do have time, the boys are always on either the console or the, or the PC. Mm-hmm. So um, I have very limited time to play. I've been, I've been trying to get myself through The Witcher, actually. I've been trying to get through Witcher 3. I'm still stuck somewhere in Novigrad. I can't seem to get out. I know it's massive. It's yeah. massive. <laughs> and every time I have an hour or two, you know, I'll, I'll get on and I'll, I'll play. But I still can't get rid of all the stuff i need to do in novigrad so i'm still in novigrad yeah but, and i'm really enjoying it and it would be cheesy of me to say that, that it's actually my favorite series to play but i am really enjoying it i will say though i mean this is a bit old school now but one of one of the favorite things i ever played was baldur's gate mm. gate 2. 
Yeah. Wow. Loved Baldur's. I've always been a D and D kind of guy. I, you know, when I was a kid, I played paper, pen and pa- pencil and paper. Dungeons and Dragons. So I've always been a fantasy RPG kind of guy. Yep. Always enjoyed it. So when Baldur's Gate came out, uh, it was Baldur's Gate 2, I think it was. Um, it was the first one I, I didn't play. But the second one I, I, I played three times through and uh, loved it every single time. That's cool. <laughs> I, I played D&D yesterday, actually. So, yeah, I'm with you. I, I know the Pencil and paper. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Pencil and paper. You, man. Absolutely. I got, got my, di- uh, my dice are over, over here. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get them while we're continuing to talk. Oh, oh man, I, I, oh, go on, Doug. Oh, I, I was just gonna say I'd, I'd love to play now, but I uh, like again, like I said, I have so little time. It's a time sink, you yeah. know. And uh, yeah, it's it's it, I, because I'm you know I, I I'm as well. So between teaching and professional acting, I'm I, my oh, wow. <laughs> cool. <laughs> pretty hectic, yeah, crazy, <laughs> but. Uh, I'd love to start up a little D and D group here. I might. I, I I actually put on my Christmas wish list this year um, <laughs> the D and new D and D starter set. Thinking if I got that, I'd share it with my boys and maybe we'd have a go. Nice dice. Yeah, got the little That's blue. Awesome. Got the green. Yeah. Got a bunch of dice. Yeah. Is that ten sided or twelve sided there? Well, I got my yeah. twenty here. <laughs> gamers man yeah dude it's 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 so good like i have like a bunch of sheets with like stats and character traits and and snaring strike for my ranger class like dude i'm all about it <laughs> oh man uh, a ranger class that's my favorite i'm really liking it so far really liking it before i played like a warrior class on like the startup kit to yeah. kind of get into it and figure it out my character was thorn that's how he talks <laughs> yeah so I think I, I always just kind of um, secretly fantas- fa- fantasize as uh, uh, myself as Aragorn, you know. Nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah, of course, yeah. I mean, who doesn't? You're, you, are, you either you, know, you want to be one of those guys, don't you? I want to be Gimli or Legolas or Aragorn or Gandalf. It's yeah. really those four. Nobody really wants to be Frodo, do they? <laughs> no. No. Say. I mean, and even Frodo his, wants to be Frodo. His, his situation sucks. <laughs> He's just kind of watching everything transpire. Like, yep, you're cool. Yeah. You're cool. <laughs> you're cool. I wish I could do that. I wish I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> this is kind of a loaded question. Um, so you can answer this in any way, really. Um, how do you hope gaming as kind of a platform will evolve moving forward i know we talked a little bit about vr mm. um but what what is like your hope in terms of like whether it's development whether it's like an outcome before games or whether it's um kind of a mentality about gaming or what, what do you hope kind of evolves the mm. most i should say um well i think we're already seeing it happen i think what i what i used to want for games and for gaming in general is for it to become more more mainstream mm-hmm. um to just more generally you know recognizable acceptable understood mm-hmm. uh, all of that because i you know when i was a kid it was a you know <laughs> you were you were real geeks if you played dungeons and dragons or yeah. if you, you know video games you know all that kind of stuff but because of the way everything's moved um, it's becoming so much cooler, and I think that that's going to open up everything in gaming. You know, everything is going to open up with, you know, films. Film companies are going to get involved. They're already involved. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it, um, I, you know there, there's going to be these collaborations across different arms and media and and everything else. And it's just going. I think you know, like with computer chips, where they you know exponentially increase in power year on year. Yeah. Um, I think we're going to see gaming and platforms and the games themselves do exactly the same thing. This is why I'm so I'm, I'm so excited about the VR situation because that's just that little step over that line, you know. Yeah. It won't be too long. I mean, who knows how long? But it won't be too long in the in the world of, you know, in generations wise before we can step into worlds properly. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's really exciting. You know, what if you could actually walk into a game world yeah i mean that would be thrilling that would be absolutely thrilling and we've seen movies that have played with this idea you know it's it's yeah. not tron for example you know the old yep. school tron yep you know, that's a version of it but um i think we're not too far from being able to do a version of that you heard it here first guys he has inside information he knows it's happening <laughs> 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 
<laughs> no secrets there. I know nothing. I know nothing. <laughs> I, I I think that's really interesting. And I think I also think we're kind of heading in that same direction too. It's like this is what our next big step is. I don't know logistically, like control wise, if it'll still be, you know, using a controller or if it's going to be in a literal space and you're kind of, you know, moving around um, in the virtual world. But I I, I would I would also love to see how that transpires. Like, bring it on. Yeah, it's like a Star Trek hologram kind of, you know, holodeck. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That was so cool. You know, <laughs> I mean, science fiction always predicts the stuff that we end up being able to do. So it's going to happen. I just think we're closer than ever. I'm just waiting for lightsabers, man. It's obvious we're closer than ever. You know, every year we get closer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's almost there. <laughs> yeah. Um, another kind of loaded question, but. If you can make your own game, what would it be like? You know, <clears throat> there's two answers to this. Um, one is I would probably make a fantasy RPG, mm -hmm. and I'd go down all the typical routes. You know, there'd be elves, there'd be dwarves, there'd be gnomes, there'd be, you know, halflings, there'd be you know, <laughs> all this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and then it would just be totally lost in the ether of all the other stuff that's out there. Um, and probably be rubbish, because I think I'm probably a rubbish games designer. But <laughs> Honest, that's why. If I was really to design games, do you know what? The, the games I really love, and this is totally not video game, although you can play this on video. One of, the, one of my favorite games ever is Pente. It's a little board game. And it's just it. Look, the board looks like a Go set, you know, Go, the Japanese Go. Yeah, like a, uh, a sh yeah, yeah, just a bunch of squares. Um, and Pente, you just play with little glass stones, and it's one of those five in a row or capture five pairs kind of games. Okay, yep. I love it. It's so simple. Yeah. It's so simple. It's like drafts or checkers or or chess to a certain extent. You know, such a simple idea, but with so many possibilities so many permutations you can play it over and over and over again and um i just think it's an amazing game so if i could choose a game that i would like develop and that could be potentially successful i would think i would try to develop something really simple like that something that just <sighs> it's so easy to fun. learn exactly yeah addicting but fun simple anyone can learn how to play it it can be rolled out thrown on a bed thrown on a you know picnic bench whatever off you go because mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know i love video games but you can't just play them anywhere well you can i suppose if you got you know psps and you know ds's and things like that so was, that's all changed but yeah yeah um there's runs something about some point. yeah uh, and that yeah exactly well and, and i was about to say there's also something about playing against a real person in real time but yeah. that's all so you know <laughs> yeah. yeah video games can pretty much do what a board game can do yeah, and even like what what Witcher Three kind of did was they they incorporated another mini game that's almost on that same level. Gwent, it's another game inside of the game. So some people get on Witcher Three just to play Gwent. Yeah, I know it's crazy. I don't like it. Yeah, I, I suck at it. I'm so bad. I don't have any good cards. I played, I played that one necessary game of Gwent. You know, at the very beginning of the game when you have to play because that's just where the story takes you. Yeah. And I was like, this. I hate this game. I'm not playing this again. <laughs> People in the game keep asking me to play again. I'm just like, nope. <laughs> no, <real> stuff. <laughs> they have that in a lot of games, especially um, um, the the one that you say uh, the the game of Gwen was mandatory. It brings me back to uh, remember uh, playing a 007 game on the PS1, I think, and you had to play blackjack and like get uh, a certain amount of money, and you could not move on from that point if you weren't good at blackjack. Oh, wow. It got yeah. frustrating points. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, I'm stuck at the moment with Siri. I can't get past this section where Siri has to go down some steps and past all these, you know, uh, junior horses men or something like that. And I just can't get past it. I've oh, been I know what you're talking about. Times. I'm so mad at it. I'm just like, oh, <laughs> one more time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love playing in Siri, but like that situation was really crazy. Like I, I, I'm play I was playing it on hard because people online told me that was the right thing to do. So like I was I had to do that section like fifteen times. I'm like, you know what? Uh, see, I've already done it like twenty times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> going, oh, I, I need like a three hour block of time when I can just get on and try to get through that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, 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 I mean you probably already know. Like do you do you already know kind of like exactly what happens throughout the entire game while you were doing all of the voiceover work? Or did you try <laughs> to have a little bit of a 
cue of what I know happening. I know all the main storylines, but like these these little excerpts with Siri in them, I don't know anything about those. I didn't record anything for those. Yeah. So I never saw any of the summaries. I didn't record anything for them. Um, and I'm I I've been pleasantly surprised actually because I thought, well, you know, having recorded the whole game. I'm probably going to remember every situation when I get to it, you know, and all the choices that are available. I don't. (laughs) (laughs) I don't. So I find myself going, oh, my God, am I really going to go to the book and cheat? (laughs) I should know this. Flipping through the script. That's awesome. <laughs> well, no, I've got the, you know, I've got the, the handbook, you know, the, oh. the and everything. So, yeah, uh, I don't go to it very often, though. Only occasionally when I get really stuck. But that's wonderful. I mean, that's a good question to bring up. It's just like you did a lot of the voice acting, and were there any surprise moments, even in um, The Witcher Three, that you were just like caught off guard? You were like, oh, oh. Yeah, actually, there was one just recently, and it was actually, I don't want to do any spoilers here, but it was kind of the final meeting with Junior Horson. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that whole house and stuff, and I was kind of, you know, I was walking through the house before I met him, and I was just like, oh, my God, this is insane. Yeah. And then and then there's that, that you know, sauna tub, and you just go, oh, my God. <laughs> and then you're given a choice. Yeah. And if you've gotten there yourselves, you know yeah. what I'm talking about. Oh, I, I remember the choice. And I was just like, nope. Yep. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I know exactly what's happening here. <laughs> exactly. <Fuck this. laughs> yeah. did, did you two get to that section yet? I don't think so. I'm okay, trying to yeah, remember. Uh, you yeah, know, know it when you get to it, man. You know it. it. You're All like, right. oh, this is, excuse my French, this is fucked. <laughs> this is fucked. Yeah. <clears throat> So uh, that's what, I mean, you I mean, you record that stuff, but you don't you don't get told as the actor necessarily all of the visual details that the player is going to see. Mm-hmm. So you kind of understand the storyline, you understand the choices that the character has to make, and you understand what the you know what the player is going to be doing and stuff like that. But you don't know exactly what you're going to be seeing when you play it. So that was a shock to me. I was just like, oh man. You know, gritty, gritty just got gritty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> gritty got grittier. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And um, before we let you go, I know you have other things you have to do. Uh, I wanted to ask a favor. Yeah, yeah. Could you uh, do a little uh, book end saying, you know, uh, thank you for watching the Black Oni Podcast. This is Geralt. <laughs> signing out, or whatever, whatever you wanted to say. You know, little, Wait, what's the show called? Black uh, Black Oni Podcast. Yeah. Pop podcast. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So I have to get my game face on. Here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. <laughs> Thank you for watching Black Oni Podcast. This is Geralt. I got to get back to the path now. Enjoy. What? <laughs> like that? Yeah, yeah, I like it. I like it. I, like it. I, think, I think I mentioned to you in a tweet before. I was like, every time I'm on stream or playing it, like, I'm trying hard to do the voice. I'm just like, this isn't this. Because, like, I, I'm kind of like amongst some people, I know, I'm known for like doing the solid snake voice. So it's a little similar in a way, but it's like, if, you, if I'm trying to do it, totally not the same. So I'm like, man, this is harder than it looks. It's diff- yeah, well, it's, and it's totally different. Somebody tweeted to me the other day, um, yesterday actually, and said, hey, did you do this particular character in Watch Dogs? And I was like, no, not unless I was drugged and asleep when I was doing it. Um, but, you know, the, uh, to his ear, yeah. it was a very similar kind of voice. There's a lot of those voices out there, though. You know, a lot yeah. of those kind of, those gruff kind of, you know, I'm a tough guy kind of voice, you know. And I, I do another voice for a, another game called Blues and Bullets. And, and it's a very similar voice. It's not Geralt, yeah. but it's very, very close to Geralt. Yeah. And, you know, that's what, you know, sometimes you get called in for. They want that kind of reluctant hero, kind of, you know, I've been around the block yeah. too many times, you know. <laughs> I've got stones in my shoes, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Uh, yeah. Um, Doug. Thanks again so much for uh, for coming on, for sharing your time, sharing your experiences with us. Um, anytime you you want, you're more than welcome to come on again and uh, and kick Seriously. it with us. Yeah, thank uh, you, man. Oh, thank cool. you. Well, thank you, you know, um, you know, let me know when this goes out, and um, you know, when you guys are on and everything. And 
Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll check. I haven't honestly had a chance to check out the podcast yet, so I will do. I promise. Some of them are long, dude. Don't even, don't even worry about it. <laughs> you ramble yeah. a lot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. that's all right. That's all right. Will, David, Chris, man, you guys are great. It's been yeah. uh, lovely having a chat with you. So yeah, absolutely. Um, we'll be in touch for sure. Um, I'll, I'll still be bugging you about like, hey, I'm still trying to get your voice down. I'm still trying. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep going. You know, you know the, the the key the key to it, I think, is to smoke heavily for multiple <laughs> years, drink too much whiskey in your lifetime. I'll, I'll let you hear my get not enough it. sleep, <laughs> not and then sleep. go for it. Thank you for watching the Black Oni podcast. <laughs> I appreciate you stopping by. It's like that's like Snake, right? <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's all right, oh. though. Yeah, it's, it's okay. It was a growl. Like, I, I'm not even going to try to do a growl. I'm not going to embarrass myself. <laughs> every, every, everybody's got an inner Geralt, you know? Yeah, yeah. You just got to channel him. Yeah. Channel, channel him through. And I, love the way, I love the way you say, mm-hmm. Like, every, <laughs> like, just so subtle, so perfect. I'm like, oh, man. This is good. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> That's all different. Yeah, just, and it's, all the, it's all the little things, isn't it? You know, the yeah. ones that everybody knows. Like, Care for a game of Gwent? <laughs> like, no, damn it! <laughs> so long, farewell. Mm. I'd like to have a look at your wares. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's all that stuff, isn't it? I mean, those are the things you hear most often. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. But you know what's funny about those things? What the developers could have done is had me record each of those things once, mm-hmm. and then plug that one thing in each time. No. They're all recorded completely individually. Really? So, wow. Geez. Yeah. Wait, so... So when... every single so long is its own unique so long. So every time... That's oh, different. Wow. That's, That's different. Really cool. I know a lot of... I know um, they'll have you read uh, like a bunch of generic uh, lines and then they'll kind of, you know, cut and paste uh, throughout the game. But that's that's wonderful. Yeah. Holy yeah, crap. no, they, they, were, they were really keen. You know, CD Projekt Red was really keen on making sure that, you know, Geralt's responses were as organic as they could be yeah. throughout. Wow. Yeah. So none of this cut and paste stuff. That's awesome. <clears throat> I think all the damage, you know, when he takes damage and stuff like that, you know, all his grunts and howls and all that stuff, that's all cut and paste stuff. Okay. Well, yeah. But yeah. the dialogue isn't. No, that's all fresh. How many grunts did you have to do overall? <laughs> Oh, I don't know. I mean, it was it was <laughs> it was like the end of a session for maybe an hour. We did that kind of stuff. Okay, that's, yeah. not, bad. that's not bad. But I mean, you know, honestly, when you're playing the game, you're not really you know paying attention to the unique qualities of each grunt, no, are you? No, no. But grunt. oh my <laughs> god, I'm gonna die! <laughs> run, 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 run! Yeah, dodge, yeah. dodge! <laughs> wait, wait, was that an individual grunt? No. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> But yeah, look out for me and other stuff coming up. Um, obviously, there's the you know there's the new um, blood and wine. I keep saying it wrong. I keep saying blood and fire or something like that. Blood and wine, blood and wine. expansion pack coming out. Hearts of Stone was uh, awesome. It was awesome. cool, wasn't it? Yes. It, you yeah. know, we had so much trouble getting that um, that Geralt um, ghost voice. It was a nightmare. That must have been yeah. just the right quality to it. So. That, that's a that's a wonderful thing to bring up because I mean I don't want to ruin anything for anyone who didn't get to it yet, but there is a, a circumstance that happens that alters the way Geralt talks. That must have been a, interesting but frustrating too, because now you are changing what you were used to doing for Geralt, but then like doing it in a much different tone now. Yeah, and we played with stuff that was so completely different, and uh, it, it was just it was amazing. I mean, we went like full circle is kind of how to best describe. <laughs> But it took us ages to find it. Yeah, absolutely ages. Oh man! And what 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 are you drinking there, Chris? What is that? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> look like beer. I it keep seeing. Like I know it does look like beer, doesn't it? It's either root beer or it's proper beer. And if it is beer, it's like it's a it's an indie brand, isn't it? It's like some kind of little micro brewery or some something. Sh- <laughs> Sam's. <laughs> Sam's. Is it Sam Adams? <laughs> Which one? Is it Boston Lager? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, <laughs> of course. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, I'm like Boston Ale. That's a good one, Boston though. Ale. I like that. Right. Yeah. That's awesome. Good. I, I still have like a box of it left, so I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> I've only yeah. seen one bottle keep coming up, so it's not like, you know, you've been just pulling out of the case, you know? Yeah. <laughs> that's you guys. Well, that's what it looks like. That's what it looks like, exactly. <laughs> one after another. Do you have, do you have any, uh, like, other projects that we may not know about. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Up? Um, 
Uh, well, I can't. Uh, one of them I've, I've already mentioned, Blues and Bullets, and that's yeah. already out there. But it's the third installment coming up soon. I think they're hoping to get it out in March. It's got kind of mixed reviews, but most of them have been really positive. And they're, they're this fantastic little indie company, um, uh, small developers called Crowd of Monsters, uh, based in Spain. Mm. And they're just doing some fantastic work. So you know, go check them out because I think yeah, if you know, I think there's you're going to see good things come out of that studio in the future. Um, and it's a beautiful game as well because it, I, I, I mean, go check it out. You'll, you'll see what I mean. Yeah, right <clears throat> but I play uh, the main character, Elliot Ness, in that. Oh, wow. And so I recently recorded the, the third episode of that. And um, there's a game by Ubisoft, Ubisoft that I can't mention, but I, can, I think I can mention the developers um, that's coming out. You probably won't recognize me in there, but I am in there in several um, several guises, different guises. Oh, so, um, Lord, if that's oh, what man. I think it is. If I'm it is what I think for it, it is. the entire time yeah. now. Uh, <laughs> is it scheduled yeah. for 2016? <laughs> You know, I don't know. I haven't been following it on the web or anything like that. I just oh. know that it's, you know, it's not too far out from being released. I, it's mm. been in development for about five years, oh, wow. I think. I auditioned for it like a year ago and then only oh. just recently recorded. So. Oh, this is going to be nuts. Oh, I can't wait to see. You got to <laughs> set. Ah. So you can, you can go on the Ubisoft website and check out all the different games they're developing and make a guess. <laughs> just gonna, you're gonna pull up the list just start one is yeah. it this one no is I'm it this already, one no is it this? I'm, already <laughs> I'm already like looking for it like which one is it, it saw... but yeah. i can say no more because i signed an nda yeah dude it can it can literally be assassin's creed it could be far cry it can be it could be anything it could be absolutely anything watch it be all of them <laughs> i'm gonna say if it's all of them then like <laughs> that'd be ridiculous all the games <laughs> <laughs> when it comes out, you got to tell us which character you play. Oh, man. Oh, we can look at the credits, too. I found you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we see. We know. Um, <laughs> did, did you guys have any other uh, questions you wanted to wanted to throw down? Are you a soccer fan? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I love, no, I love soccer. I love soccer. They call it football over here, Chris. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, can get, you can get beat up for stuff like that over here. You know? <laughs> I, say, I say soccer. I say soccer because we have a we have yeah, a yeah we have a football. Yeah. No, I know. I'm American. I, it's always soccer for me. I always I always have this funny little hitch when I say to somebody, you know, um, you know, are you a are you a football fan? Because <laughs> <laughs> football means something totally different to me. Obviously, yeah. Um, oh, but you know what's really interesting? I I do love soccer. I love soccer, but I don't follow it. I used to play. Oh. I did did my knee in playing soccer. Um, yeah, I used to play uh, either center fullback or right fullback. That was my position. Wow. I play striker number nine, center forward. <laughs> uh, yeah, you look like a striker. You got that look, you know, with the little mustache and stuff, you know, and the hair coming down over your eye. Yeah, he's yeah. You got a striker kind of. Yeah. No, uh, yes. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, now, um, but you know what's really interesting over here in England? Is American football is coming over here now? Oh, yes, yeah. it is. they play at Wembley. Yes, it is. I didn't know that. Yeah, I mean, it's it's. It, I've been over here sixteen years, and you never saw anything. And you see guys. I've only seen it a few times, but you see guys walking down the street on their way to a football practice with the full pads on and stuff. And I was just like, "Where am I? Am I in England?" I just thought it just. You never used to see it in England. It's true. They play a lot at uh, Wembley Stadium now. Um, the franchise. Oh is man, you guys are making some funky noises. Yeah, I think Skype is just being. Yeah, we're coming in and out. Yeah. 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 Sorry about that. I don't know. I don't. I don't know how to fix it. <laughs> can't. It can't handle our excitement. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Too much cool going on. Too much hype. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a bold fat guy. <laughs> 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 uh anyway so uh, yeah <laughs> um i'm probably gonna head off uh soon any other questions um well did i mean honestly i could keep asking more questions but i want to yeah. i want to i want to be <laughs> respectful color? of your time if you want if you want to continue we could absolutely continue on the podcast with you but um but I know we agreed earlier that it would just be. Um, really yeah, I'm gonna head off, get some dinner and stuff, sort yeah. myself out. Yeah. So, 
Yeah, I got a full day tomorrow, so I got to spend time with the kids while I can. And you know, next time I made a masaka last too. night that is absolutely rocking. Well, you made a I what? I gotta go have my leftovers. You made a what? A what? Masaka. Masaka. Last question. Masaka. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> Moussaka. Now, it, I think that's the Greek term for it. It's like a Mediterranean lasagna, mm. and um, yeah, but there's there's no pasta in it. Well, you can use pasta in it, but the one I do has a base of potatoes on the bottom, mm. and then you have this like meat sauce, uh-huh. red meat sauce, and you do potatoes, meat sauce, then fried aubergines. Uh, um, that's eggplant to you guys. Okay, <laughs> and then more red sauce. And then courgettes, that's zucchini for you guys. And then more red sauce. And then a bechamel cheese and flour sauce over the top. And then you bake it. Oh, my God. And it's mm. delicious. It's absolutely mm, out of this world. <laughs> oh, and you, can, you have to remember, though, to put some cinnamon in the meat sauce. Really? And you have to put some okay. nutmeg in the bechamel sauce. That, that sounds amazing. Sounds epic. <laughs> Sounds- if you want to look it up, look it up. There's yeah. this uh, uh, British cook named Rick Stein, S-T-E-I-N. And it's his special moussaka recipe. You can look him up. Yeah. Uh, I, I love to cook as well, but that is beyond what I would have thought to do myself. So that's really cool. That looks yeah, it delicious. takes a little time, but man, it is so tasty. So tasty. Little red wine or some dark beer with, with it, you know? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Something new to try. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. <laughs> cool. If you find yourself in um in in the U.S. for any of the conventions or anything like that, um, do let us know. Let me know. I I you know I'm go- probably going to be at PAX East. I'm going to try to make it out to. I don't know if I'm going to be able to go to E3, but I'm going to try. Um, we shall try. Yeah, we'll try. Um, and yeah, if I if I'm ever across the pond, it'd be great to meet up with you in person and kick it. Oh, I think he froze. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> oh. It's like staring intently at you. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, is he back? I think he's back. Are you back? I don't think so. It looks like he froze out. Oh no! Like he froze him, Will. Yeah. That question stunned that him. Crush, that question just ruined everything for everyone. Why? It's gone. He just disappeared. Oh, well, there he is. Oh, there he is. <laughs> there he is. All right. Well, I was just saying, you know, if we're, if we're ever in the same area at any time, it would be awesome to meet in person and, and kick it. Where's your kind of rough locale? I'm in Will? Boston, so Boston, Massachusetts. So, Cool. Where are you, Chris? Boston as well. Are you all three in Boston? No, uh, I'm in Pennsylvania. I'm the one. <laughs> oh, I'm yeah. an old Pennsylvania boy. Whereabouts? I'm in um, Marietta right now, but I'm from Lancaster. All oh, right. Yeah. No, I, I went to Penn State for my graduate degree. Oh, nice. cool. So, yeah, right in the middle, center, uh, uh, um, oh, State College. Nice. Oh, gosh, that's the best place yeah. to be then. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I spent a little time in Lancaster, though. I thought it was a nice town. Yeah, born and raised. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, all East Coast guys. Well, cool. Well, if, I, if I'm ever on the East Coast, especially up in that Northeast yeah. kind of section, I'll give you a shout and let you know where I'm at. Same here. Awesome. I eventually plan to make it out to, to England. Hang out. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah dude, if, you, if you come over this way, let me know. You know, if I can meet up, I'll, I'm happy to do that. Yes. Awesome. I'm, I I'll definitely treat, need to treat you to an English day. pint. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. I'm already ready. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Doug. It's been, it's been awesome. It's been real. Everyone at home, big round of applause. I know we can't hear your round of applause, but do it anyway. Uh, Doug is uh, awesome. I'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, thanks for talking to me, guys, and um, you know all the best to all your listeners. And you know, if you haven't played Witcher Three, play it. If you haven't played Blues and Bullets, check it out. It's worth checking out. Um, and look out for you know other things coming up. There's lots of good stuff coming up. So hmm. yeah, it's going to be a good year, I think. 2016. Yeah, 2015 was awesome. 2016 is going to be great. Too. Better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <It has> to be. <laughs> so we took a quick break. We are back. Um, for people at home who listen to the first part of the podcast, the interview with Doug Cockle, guys, guys, so awesome. We had an extra awesome. conversation after uh, the interview, and he's just a really stand-up guy. I think you guys are um, – go check out the games that he, he's in. Go check out the movies he's in. He's super awesome. Um, awesome. Really, really lucky to have him on the podcast. And 
of course, I'm really lucky to have these gentlemen with me uh, for the rest of the podcast. We have so much hype <laughs> for you guys. We got some uh, football in the background, so you might hear a random outburst or two. <laughs> <laughs> well for played, those, sir. <laughs> for those of you that are just listening to the uh, to the actual audio, if you could only imagine, just Dave's computer just slightly shifting to the left, so he has a perfect visual of his TV. <laughs> oh god the way he did it was just so sneaky too it's just like, just like <laughs> <laughs> um so uh. the rest of the podcast will consist we usually we have like gaming news you know notable gaming releases there's so much stuff that happened between the last podcast and now so we're just gonna like move on from that um what have you guys been playing lately i said an inappropriate joke before i won't say it again <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> that's, that's on you. You, you can. <laughs> I won't judge what you. What have I been playing with uh, myself? <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, um, I I have you know just we just finished up school. Well, I did. Um, work's been not too bad. I started. I, I've been playing a little bit of um, Blobs as much as I could. Uh, Black Ops Three. Um, I've been on my um. Believe it or not, I've been. Uh, this is gonna sound really stupid, but I've been playing Neko Atsumi on my phone. It's a cat game on my mobile phone. It's it addicting. It's unbelievably addicting. It's oh god, it's stupid because you just lay out little cat toys, and then certain cats will come in, and then there's like these What's rare cats. <laughs> Neko Atsumi, A T S U M E, and um, it's just a game about cat, like looking up cats and like certain cats visiting your like little den and stuff like that like let's say if you put out a scratching post (laughs) dude on itunes it has a full five stars and on google it has four and a half love these or four and three love these kitties apparently it looks cute i love pussy oh my god i've been waiting for an opportunity to say that all day (laughs) <laughs> he's like yes he set me up um it's it's actually a good game just if especially if you're a cat lover um you um there's rare cats you can name your cats if you're like me i like to make uh puns with my cats so i'll be like meow zoot ozil which is a player on the arsenal team it's a play on his name and they'll be like mr perfect with like you are you know like, i know <laughs> I have I have five cats, so I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> but I mean, like simple games like that, like on mobile, mm-hmm. uh, is honestly what's taking over a lot of people's like lives. Oh, take my boss for instance; he'll sit down and play that um, the um, uh, like he'll play that um, the tacticianers game with the with the army. It was like um, arm like armed and arm and conquer or something like that. It's mm. it's. It's ridiculous. There'll be a bunch of guys doing the same thing, and they'll play pool and stuff like that. It's the simple games that get a lot of um, downloads, uh, ratings, and such. Mm, sure. It's kind of addicting. And it also connects a lot of the older generation with the newer generation. Um, I mean, older generation with um, new technology, because okay. they can play old school games like pool. They can play like you know, like simple like um, Dota games and such. Yeah. It, it kind of, it's kind of bridging the gap between, oh. you know, like... <laughs> um, there'll be a, it'll bridge the um the gap between a bunch of um old school players and uh, new games and such. Mm-hmm. It's it's quite wonderful actually. Nice. Yeah. What are you even playing, Dave? Um, Black <laughs> Ops Three as well. Uh, Rocksmith as usual, and getting back into The Witcher as well, which has been long overdue. Mm. And it's oh. like. The only reason I got back to Witcher recently was because I finally put down Fallout 4, just for a little bit. Yeah. I can't. I can't put... I mean, I didn't um, name Fallout 4 because I'm assuming Everyone's most gamers playing are playing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it goes without saying it's an amazing game. Like, there's... Some, I'll find myself playing not not as long as I did with uh, Arkham Knight, but it it could get up there if I don't, you know, actually check my phone and be like, oh, oh. Oh, it'll be like four hours gone by. I'm like, all right, I think I should stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. I think um, I've also been playing Witcher three and Fallout and Black Ops three. But like, 
people love to like talk shit about Black Ops Three, guys, but it, it's just it's just a fucking fun game to play, dude. Like, people like to rag on Call of Duty because it's an easy target, and of course because of the communities, like a lot of like. Well, that and they come out with one every damn year. I yeah. mean, I, I'd but still geez. like a year off. Just give yeah. me one year off. But it's cool. Yeah. I still bought it and played it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's been a lot of fun. Um, this been another game I've been I've been playing a little bit of Gears of War. Um, yes, I've seen your streams. Yeah, yeah, a little bit of that. <laughs> trying to show a little bit of love to my Xbox One. Please don't turn on. Like it was like it almost <laughs> it, it almost turned. It, it tried to turn off during one of my live streams, and I didn't say anything about the word Xbox. So I was fucking pissed. It happened on stream, so I was like, guys, this is why this console pisses me off. It's trying well, to turn itself off just because. Why? Can can we get a gif of that? Oh my god, that was great. It's like, yeah, for all my Xbox... Please don't turn off! He, like, oh, whipped yeah. his head at a speech. Like, it just... It's, it's listening. Just, no. it's, it's always listening. So, you know, I, I was just not a fan of that. But, uh, but honestly, the games on Xbox are awesome, so I, I, I play them um, whenever I get a chance. But um, what I've been playing something else, too. I've been playing a little bit of Dishonored. Um, nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, got back into Street Fighter. Uh, dude, Street Fighter Five is going to be amazing. Cannot wait. Um, yes. I've been playing like a lot of other little stuff in between. Played a little bit more Warframe. Um, a lot has changed in that game. That like, wow. But I'm still like super powerful, so it feels really good playing it again. Because I'm like, even though all this stuff has changed and like they gave they open up so many more options for different types of things you can do. Like I'm still fucking powerful as shit. <laughs> so, Will just walks over. What is this shit? Arrow. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice. It's um, nice. It's nice. <laughs> One question that I have for you both, um, since I, I, you know, like have become a regular on the uh, podcast, mm -hmm. what have you guys thought of since we first started? Um, well, Will has been doing this for fifty episodes on. Oh, congratulations! This is the fiftieth podcast. Uh, thank you, thank you. I've had many of you on for a lot of the ride, so that's been a, that's been an honor. podcast went up i don't know what did we even talk about back then yeah right i, well, I mean I, honestly but, yeah what did you guys not say? change that much <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't even well, have an agenda back then <laughs> just not a public one i had an agenda but not a one that was um, to take over the world we know well. shown shown off to the people <laughs> um but i think the biggest thing to change aside from just like having next-gen consoles was yeah um just the way that we interact with the media i mean like at any given point, any of you guys can just upload a screenshot uh, of something that you're playing or this really funny moment. You can just upload a quick video clip or you can you can um, like just jump on a party chat. Like the ease of, of connecting with people is much, much more like there's a there's a in a way there's more of a similarity to PC gaming. But in a way, it's even more different now because of how easy they made it to to just get on to share something, to jump in. It's 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 all just so much more accessible. It's it's it, um, piggybacking off what you just said um, beforehand. We we would even with the PS3 and let's just say Xbox 360, uh, certain things couldn't have been imagined like streaming and such. And now they um, they come with applications on PS4 and Xbox One. Don't turn on, <laughs> and just like stuff like that. You know, it's just it's it's amazing how the gaming community has come from. You know, like like um like Doug Cockle said. Um, you know, it's like kind of being oh you're a nerd for gaming and stuff to this huge mainstream thing and a lot of people are gaming a lot of people are trying to do excellent charity work with their gaming and mm -hmm. it's making a difference and it's wonderful there's also assholes out there too but we yeah. won't get into them you know what i mean yeah and i well, think I guess, the yeah I, when doug said that like i kind of remembered my mom saying like 
you know, when when we're watching football games or, or any sporting events, like a few years ago, you saw trailers for movies and you saw trailers for beer and all yeah. that stuff. But even she's noticing, being in her 60s, like, there's a lot of games coming out. Yeah. yeah. That wasn't yeah. really a prominent thing. And we're all really connected a lot more than we were, too. But it also reminded me, like, how if you open your mouth and say the wrong thing, the shit storm that is brought down upon you. Yeah. You will be retweeted. You will be quoted. You will have sound bits made of you. And it's at the same time, it's great. But at the same time, it's just like if you say one thing that doesn't, you know, go well with the hive mind, you will get, you know, for lack of a better term, apart. crucified. Yeah, yeah. It's just kind of nuts. Yeah. But, I mean, it's a double-edged sword. You got your, your goods and your bads to it. But. Exactly. I guess we we only started doing this like right before next gen launch, so yeah. we've kind of just seen what it's done the last few years, and now they're already talking about the next gen systems. Yeah, PlayStation Five. Come on, <laughs> I know. Yeah. They said twenty nineteen is probably the projected time is coming, and that doesn't seem that far off. It uh, PS PS four came out twenty thirteen, so yeah. fourteen. But 15, it came out the 18, edge. 18, yeah, yeah, nineteen. So it's six years, you know. But it came out on the one thirteen. Well, thirteen, fourteen. Let's count that up because it was yeah. in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. October. It so was no, it's November. November. Yeah. yeah. November. Yes. Yes. yes Even worse. Um, <laughs> yeah. No. Exactly. Right on the on the teetering edge of a uh, fifteen. So that would only be four years. Mm-hmm. Let's let's break that down. I mean, obviously, PC gamers have to go through with everything. What they have to update. There's there are the PCs and such like that. But that's like small parts here and there that they can afford. You know, like the next gamer. Um, <laughs> The next graphics card and everything, it'll be like what, 150, 200 bucks? That's yeah. fine, but it may last you for the next five years. I won't, I, versus, won't, I won't mind it as much as long as we can still play our PS4 games. Because, like, especially with these streaming services, for example, and like yeah. everything on the uh, online, you have to download them, you can't use discs. Like, but will, I mean, it's come into a thing that that's that's become a, such a, a debatable issue now. It's with um, certain P, um, certain consoles not allowing to play older games. Yeah. Like I mean, it's annoying because I mean, let's just say we get the PS5, but we can't play any PS4 games. It's like it's the same thing. It's like recycled, recycle. It's, yeah. it's reusing the same modem. I mean, a uh, mode that you're not being allowed to play with PS4 games or PS3 games on PS4. You know what I mean? It's it's annoying, to yeah. say the least. Absolutely. Um, and I think uh, someone. Uh, I'm gonna give a shout out to Rich from Review Tech USA. Uh, I was watching one of his videos when I was like doing laundry. And he was talking about like how sh- like how impressed he was on um, PlayStation Now as a service in terms of like it working properly, like working really smoothly. He was using Wi-Fi when he did it. He was like, "It's it's running better than any other streaming service he's used before." Um, but at the same time, it sucks because oh. th- those games are on rotation um, and like this whole digital only <laughs> future that yeah. people are looking for. Like publishers can take games off of. The service at any point. Look at PT. Look at Scott yeah. Pilgrim. Yeah. Look at like uh, one of the Dark Sider games or something like that. It went back up because THQ is is, is um, that game got bought out by someone else. But like there's games that like don't do well anymore that like you can just no longer play anymore because the publisher don't have it up. And Konami are assholes, and we will talk about that very shortly. But can we just don't we talk about that every time? I feel like you and me will just like crucify them on a daily fucking basis because they deserve to be fucked up. Fuck them. Fuckity fucking fuck Konami. Fuck fuck you Konami. Fuck you Konami. Fuck. Seriously, they had a bleep out of as many times we say fuck Konami. Fuck yeah. and fuck. We'd we'd all be beep 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 Konami <laughs> beep 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 beep. <laughs> um, that's true though. Yeah, that's a good question though. That's a really good question. Um. Do you guys care about Gran Turismo? I mean, I, I put it on there because we haven't heard anything in a while, and yeah. there's always it's, it's, Forza car is guys always out everywhere. Front. That's so true. And Forza is just true. blasting on the commercials, and for Xbox, Xbox, and Sony still has their competitor, so it's still coming. Yeah, and it sounds like shortly, it still looks awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, I personally don't care because I, I don't know what it is. I Except with the exception of Drive Club recently, which really still impressed me, and I still have that sitting on my wall. Mm-hmm. Um, even the last Need for Speed tanked. Yeah, like it, because it was it bad. Was, it was only at night, and the, the cutscenes were terrible. Some of the customization oh, God, was cool. really cool, but I, I heard it was just just fucking weird. Like, why did they do this to this game? So, I mean, they have um, I have a lot of friends who play um, 
who play uh, the new Need for Speed and who are also into the uh, the, the modding world in um, in the real world, like they they mod their Civics, they mod mod the WRXs, and they said that the customization was wonderful because they have a lot of up to date aftermarket parts, okay. and it makes the cars look amazing. Don't get me wrong, yeah, I love that the on science. Need for Speed. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like they had the Rocket Bunny kit. Rocket Bunny is um, it's like exterior panels that go on to the um to your car to make it look a little bit more wide bodied, but yeah. it kind of gives it the effect of looking like you just put it on there. Mm. I guess it's kind of like, it's like it's there, you know it, and it looks cool, but it's not like it's blended into the panels and such. But um. Yeah. But a lot of them said that the science behind the driving and such was just so shitty. Yeah. Like the customization about Need for Speed was always great. It's always going to be there. But some of the shit that they did with the science behind um, the, the drifting and the racing, um, the racing was just not necessary. Oh, man. It was horrible. And the cutscenes were a huge fucking debating <laughs> point. <laughs> yeah, I, I tried to really like Gran Turismo uh, growing up. And I played three. I played two. I played three. I played. I had. I owned three. I played four and five. But, like, there was something like. There was so much realism that it took away the Stuff. sense of speed. So, like, the sense of speed and, like, how hard it was, like, you really had to drive a car like you really would. And I was just, like, I kind of just want to drift around this corner and, like, throw some rims on my car and, like, fucking throw a spoiler on and, like, have a good time. So that's what I wanted out of my racing experience, and I wasn't getting that out of out of Gran Turismo. Mm. But I, I, I respect and appreciate what Gran Turismo has done for racing series and for gaming in general. Um, and for the diehards who, like, absolutely love Gran Turismo, who, like, stay up, like, 24 hours each time they play it, to just play it, like, I respect that. There's two, there's a fine-tuning in the, um, in the games and such, it's, like, little, it's little details that bring the game to the, um, to the targeted consumer. Yeah. That sets them over the edge, like, we're obviously not the targeted consumer, no, we're, um, Gran Turismo is all about the, the die. (laughs) Yeah. The guys that not, love, them. well, I mean, not not the modders really, but those that can appreciate how the leather looks on the interior of said brand new or really old classic model car. How the they, suspension handles. They do right. so much. Yeah, they they really. Yeah, do. it's like on the '62 Stingray. Um, um, they were showing. Um, it's like the stitching. You could see the near stitching perfection. I mean, like like I said, I'm a cosplayer, so I can appreciate stitching. Yeah. But some of these visions are ridiculous. Like. Honestly, it's aesthetically pleasing. The yeah. visuals are just dropped dead gorgeous. It's just like wow. Yeah. But then you realize you're not going to buy a game to admire stitching. I mean, if you, I mean, you would if you if you're into that. But I mean, by all means, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's your thing. It's like calling that's Dead or Alive fans out there. I, I, mean, I, <laughs> I didn't put that out there. I, I didn't say that. <laughs> I appreciate I appreciate Dead or Alive as a fighting game. I mean, it's not the most deep fighting game. It's not my favorite fighting game. Of course not. Street Fighter takes that crown for me, um, but Dead or Alive is is a fun is a fun game, and like if you if you take the time to learn its mechanics, it, it can get really deep. There's like combo canceling and crazy shit you can do, but you know, great, Dead or Alive gets flack so much just because like it does have that fan service, and people are like it's not a real fighting game. Like, dude, go against someone who knows how to play that game. You will get fucked up. <laughs> you will get wrecked. Uh, shout out to my man uh, B Boy Ryu Collins. Um, you guys have seen him on the podcast before, but he's a, he's an, he's an avid DOA player and I've seen his work. I've seen him, I've, I've played against him before and he's taught me a couple of things in that game. And I'm just like, dude, this is like, this is deeper than I realized it was. And I thought, I already thought it was kind of deep. So can I, can I just say fighting, fighting, um, fighting, ga- uh, fighting gamers, like fighting fans, hats off to you guys. There is amazing science and, um, the depth of each game that goes out. I've seen certain people just talk how passionate they are in interviews, like um, like for Evo and such. Mm-hmm. Just can I give a shout out to all those fighting fans, especially mm-hmm. you, Will. I know you know, like um, Street Fighter goes deep, mm-hmm. but there's so many moves and combos that certain um, that only certain people, certain gamers can definitely identify with and that's you have to have quick reflexes you have to understand the game on a quantum level and oh my god congratulations you guys are yeah you guys, you guys are, are far ridiculous. better than me <laughs> I, I sat down the controller <laughs> I, I street fighter and i will get wrecked without even throwing a decent hit and and the, the person that i'm playing against will only be at best you know they're saying oh i'm average at best and i'm just like good god man it's like I, you get wrecked, and then you see like the pros play, and you see tournaments, and you're just like, how does one take a split of a split second to make up? 
like decide whether or not they're going to block forward or block back or they're crossing you up. I, I get it's confused scary. all the time. Yeah. It, it's it's amazing, it's especially yeah. like uh, shout out to my um, my godbrother uh, Sharoni. He's a huge uh, Street Fighter fan. Like that man will have uh, on, if you walk into his room, it's all Street Fighter. He's playing that game since he was I want to say born, but you know, <laughs> even on the uh, SNES and such, he he's played that game for the greater part of uh, twenty years, I believe. Yeah, he's twenty five, but he is. He's played that game, and he knows so much about it. And, and he'll only call himself, oh, yeah, I'm average at best. And then when you see some of his videos, you're just like, Dude, You're better fuck. than average. <laughs> and then the weird thing is, it's like, oh, yeah, but if I go post up at a tournament, I'll, I'll, I'll have my work cut out for me. And so yeah. it's like that generation of gamers, that generation of fighting gamers, without a doubt, hats off to you guys because i mean i don't think you guys get enough you know rec- um you know, recognition especially to like even you will you play a lot of like street fighter dead o- doa and such and you understand to a certain extent the <laughs> the amount of work that goes into it i'm just like i'm sitting there i'm like uh when i used okay. to play doa on ps3 like my th- my the thing i was known for the most wasn't my playing it was my commentating like i was the commentator for our <laughs> our room so like i would i would get people hype and I wasn't even live streaming at the time. Like this is before I even started live streaming. I was just going in to the rooms and just like talking about the counters and talking about like the the juggles and stuff like that. I was awesome. I was that guy. <laughs> you were that you were that uh, announcer from Dragon Ball Z. There yeah. <laughs> Next time on Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> will she counter? Will he bumper cut? This time. Yeah. And next time he uppercutted and yeah. she lost. I think I'm going to enter some tournaments uh, this year. Do it up. I, I don't expect I'm going to win anything, but I think I want the experience of at least doing it. I never, I never really entered any. I entered like a college gaming tournament before and got like in second place, but. Um, and before Will Rex of the competition and takes the crown and be like, oh, okay, he is in Saitama, watch. <laughs> I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't win at college. I, I, was, I, was, I was definitely one of the best players at college in regards to the game. I didn't even own Halo, and like I used to like. I entered the Halo competition. I didn't have a 360, I just entered it. Natural. And I, I almost won. I was like, all right. Natural game. I mean, there's a generation of people being born right now that'll be, that'll, that, that, that will just pick up a remote and be able to be like, oh, this is easy. Yeah. That's I'm like, what easy. do you mean? That's I've been practicing this for two months. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like, let that sink in. In the yeah. 90s and the 80s when gaming was still new, yeah. the people would just kind of be like, oh, all right. Who would have thought? And, and this is such a short amount of time because anything that, you know, like sports and such take such a long time to become, you know, globally known. It has taken off in the, you know, ten to fifteen pushing twenty years. Yeah. Yeah. No, not even. Let's just say gaming uh gaming um let's just start it uh, let's just start at two thousand. It hasn't even been a full fifteen year I mean a full sixteen years. Yeah. Yeah. That's ridiculous. That's crazy. We've we've come so far and one of the other things I wanted to actually talk about during this podcast, which is a really amazing thing um that we're getting to see in this generation is cross platform play. And so this is going to segue right into my next topic in the news which is Paragon, Battleborn and Overwatch are all coming to the PS4. Yes. And uh Paragon is actually going to be cross play. <laughs> so people on PC and PS4 will be able to play with and against each other which is by the way, developers, if you are listening to this, which I hope you are, uh, not Please. only because Doug Cockle was in the first part of it, I, I, I assume that's probably one of the reasons why you might be listening. Just um, please. <laughs> if you're still listening, guys, do more stuff like that. That is amazing. Like, more options for people to be able to play with each other and interact with each other is awesome. We love to see that. Um, but what do, you, what do you think is going to be, like, the premier... Because the thing about these games is that there's certain things that are similar about them, right? They're, like, MOBA-style shooters. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which one of these games do you think is going to be like the highlight game of the year? If they all do come out this year, see that's hard to predict. Dude. I mean, we yeah. can always send out hail marys and be like, "It'll be Paragon," you know. It's just yeah. I mean, what's the difference between the three? Because they all seem kind of similar, right? So, Battleborn has more of a focus on like cooperative play. So it's like it's more like. Um, uh, borderlands as a moba right okay. so it's, it's got it's got that same kind of style it's got the same kind of like cooperative feel like the loot drops and stuff like that and like the energy it's very similar in a lot of ways to that um i think overwatch is more is more of like a unreal 
championship or Unreal Tournament, but with like specific characters. Dude, right? Um, that but, was amazing. But, oh, I'm sorry. It's kind of like to- Team Fortress meets Unreal. That's kind of what it feels like. But like each character, of course, in all these games, each character has their own specific things. But mm-hmm. this seems very fine tuned to like very balanced like stuff. Um, and Paragon is like a mix between Gears, Unreal, and, and you know your typical MOBA. So like again, all these games have characters. Um, it's kind of like Titanfall. I would I would probably. Uh, Call it a little bit like Titanfall two because you have like the other bot, the other character, the random characters uh, that are NPCs. They're just bots running around that you can you can also kill. Um, you bring up Titanfall as also having um, like NPCs that you can kill. Um, you know, like like that. Battlefront did the same thing with their uh, with their dog fights. Oh yeah, uh, they're, they're they're not related, but I mean, it's yeah. just like it's an interesting fact that um, more and that- more games are doing it. Yes, yeah, it's, it's like okay, you'll see a uh, you'll see uh, a lot of PvP along with a lot of um, NPCs as well added in there. Mm-hmm. It does add an element of being a of, of fight because you'll be like, all right, players you'll identify with, and then all of a sudden you'll get killed by an NPC. You're like, what the what the fuck? And yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I'm a I like to say I'm a decent pilot, but then I've gotten taken. I, I've been taken down by NPCs that play like they're fucking players. I'll be chasing, I'll be breaking, and then all of a sudden I just get killed by an NPC, and I'm like, all right. Dude, I want to I want to get Battlefront just so I can have more games to play with you guys. I'm 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 thinking about like once it goes to like thirty dollars, I'm definitely getting it. But like, I will buy you Battlefront. No, don't, don't do that. No, 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 relax. I will buy you Battlefront because I have a discount on coming up. So I will buy you Battlefront, and there's no games that I want coming out, and I'd rather get you Battlefront so we can all play together. It's just like, oh, Dave, if you got Battlefront, you know how sick that'd be. Dude, Dave, so do you have Battlefront? No, it's I, I played the beta. And yeah, it did not go on my list. <laughs> okay, I, the beta was good, but it wasn't what the final product is. And I know that's saying a lot, but it's yeah. when you're playing alone versus when you're playing with friends. I, I feel like so I say different. this a lot with certain games. No, it's it's yeah. true though. Yeah, 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 totally. Can, uh, this makes me also feel bad for like the people that don't really have like a group to play with because you're you're trying to immerse yourself into the the multiplayer game but guys if that's one of you please join our group our, our games you know it's sure, like it's fun yeah, <laughs> yeah and, and the, i find that like to to an extent it's like that with call of duty but like i can still find myself having a lot of fun playing alone too but like when you're with friends and like you're talking shit over mike and like <laughs> just hanging out having some beers like dude that's fuck when you, it's the you, most fun you. yeah <laughs> yeah yeah i can't oh we gotta we gotta play some more of that guy did you guys get through the single player of that yet that that Yo, can I just say the storyline for Blobs 3? It's so been cool. insane. I it. yeah. Wait, what did you I say? Know. I still didn't get through it. I got work to do. Yeah, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't get through the whole thing yet, but I did play some of it already. And I was just like, oh, no. Right? Yeah. Like, okay, like, we usually get, you know, we hear about, you know, Call of Duty, Blobs, you know, just being for the multiplayer additions and, you know, like, fun multiplayer games. Yeah. But can we just give it up for fucking Treyarch this year? They're yeah. the, um, um... I love the way that their their um uh, I don't want to say spoilers but their their opening first mission was yeah yeah that was dude seriously and that then what happens the other... right after that train goes boom mm. oh, oh god like, the okay. train goes yep. boom yeah. the training but you guys don't even like I, I know well obviously you guys realize this but the training was in that yeah the train goes boom portion was training for your your next five years it was yeah. ridiculous yeah. it was I love games that this guy's training. As part of like certain, you know, like 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 certain story aspects of it, and it's it adds an element of charm to it. Yeah, it's kind of want to like. Do you want to go through tutorials? Uh, yeah, the tutorial felt like a mission. It didn't feel like a tutorial, you know. Yeah. It felt like a one-one with the instructor. It was just like, oh yeah. shit! And yeah. then you wake up and you're like, oh wait, I learned all this cool shit. Yeah. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think um, I think later today I'm gonna be live streaming. I'm not sure which game. So if if we if we're down for Black Ops Three, people at home, make sure you go watch the live stream of that because that'll be fun. <laughs> oh my uh, god! Imagine all of us just like drinking and playing Blops again. Yeah. Some of the stupid shit we say, I love it though. Yeah, it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think in terms of like out of the three, I think the one I'm looking forward to. Oh man, actually, I don't even know anymore. I'm, I'm kind of comparing the three, like I have been, and I'm also looking at studios. Like, yeah. that's kind of how I kind of base it on. Yeah. You got Battleborn, excuse me, Battleborn with Gearbox. Yep. And you have... You're going to get comedy out of that, right? You're going to get, like, 
over stylization comedy kind of like over the top right and you have overwatch with blizzard Mm -hmm. and then you have paragon with epic epic games yeah. So it's and like, they're all extremely competent developers, right? They're like, if I had to put my money on one of the two, whew, that's a tough sell. I mean, I, I'd go with. I'm leaning toward Overwatch, but I, I was going to say that a close second might be Paragon. No yeah. offense to any of them because the, I don't know enough about any of them. That's just perception for me right now. Yeah. Well, see what the thing is. You're going to look at the uh, the people that made Overwatch and how the you know how the the gaming. I know we don't like to do this, but a lot of the gaming community has been very receptive to like a lot of the uh, the, the trailers and such for uh, Overwatch, and you would, and it was just announced bored. to be coming to PS4 not too long ago. So it's like, oh, we are getting it! Like, yeah, yeah for a long time we were in the nose, like, eh, I mean, we, it's okay if we don't get it. I mean, it's a bummer that we don't, but I mean, like, and then they were just like, guys, PS4 will not get that. It's kind of like, oh, yes. fuck, yeah, fuck you, because now I have to buy it and yeah. give up more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try to get. Uh, uh, Paragon. At least you beat Metal. Fe- at least you beat Metal Gear. I, I haven't. Sure been did. I'm not gonna ruin anything, but my man, I'm, I, I will. I did say in my like in a minute review, like there. I don't know if I even said it during that review. It's like it does. It bothers me that some of the missions later on just become like repeats of other missions, but like the story content is really cool. I'm gonna say that. That's all I'm gonna say. And anyone who has not beaten Metal Gear, including you guys. Um, that's okay, but get to it. Um, <laughs> Metal Gear Online is a lot of fun. Uh, is it? It's hard. It's definitely not the same as like playing any other third person shooter. But it's also um, there are things I wish they did with it that they didn't do, and hopefully they will do. But um, I'm just I'm very scared about what's going to happen to the future of that game because like, who did the you fuck's hear even that working on it? Konami said that they're going to bring out another Metal Gear. I'm like, good oh, fucking yeah. luck. Oh, no, yeah, they definitely said... They... Good fuck, Dude, good fucking luck trying to bring back someone as as intelligent as Kojima just with Metal Gear alone. If we're just not even talking to Zone of Enders or any other games and we're just talking based solely off Metal Gear, good fucking luck. That, yep. That... I mean, here's Congratulations, the thing. you played yourself, Konami. If, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> if they if they do they are gonna make another middle game. If it is good, I'm still gonna be butthurt about it, but I probably will still buy it. But like it's Why would gonna you be the same. Buy it? Because if it's metal gear if it's good, the thing is if it's but I am I'm, I'm so conflicted. Metal gear fans, but I'm so conflicted. Konami, the only way that yeah. they get across is their numbers. That's if true. a lot of people That's I've seen a true. lot of movements already going on that say someone else will buy Metal Gear and they'll stream it and we'll all kind of, you know, be like, all right, it's better to get one copy and six hundred thousand other people watching yeah. versus six hundred thousand other people buying the yeah. damn thing and streaming at the same time. I'd rather do that because if it doesn't sell out and it doesn't do as well as five did I'm glad because yeah. those assholes took away a huge part. I know you and me will. Yeah. That, that was a huge part of our childhood too. Yeah, I'm totally with you on that. Actually, now now that you say that out loud, I'm like, you know what? You have a really good point. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I would love nothing more than to just play it, but uh, I I don't I don't feel like it's worth it to give Konami what they want because Konami just fucked everyone up. It's just like not not only the Metal Gear fans, but the Zone of Ender fans. A lot of, a lot of even Yu Gi like tabletop gaming fans. They, a lot of people forget that Yu Gi Oh is a huge, huge part of um. Their I forgot tabletop that was Konami. Sport. Yeah, they are, and a lot of people I know, even with the whole Metal Gear fiasco, has a lot of um top top duelists and such. They've stopped playing. Wow. Because they realize that if Konami shifts. Mm-hmm. On Metal Gear, which is their top-selling product, forget Yu-Gi-Oh, forget a lot of the tabletop gaming. But imagine if they just shift just like that off, uh, uh, just off Metal Gear Zone of Vendors. What's what's for them to stop? You know, going off of um, t- tabletop gaming, Yu-Gi-Oh cards, uh, etc. Right. I've seen I've seen at least sixty people give it up. Right, and it's ridiculous. And the crazy, the craziest thing is we 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 are avid Metal Gear fans and. Like, at this point, like, I kind of don't want any more Metal Gear, but I kind of do. But, I know what you mean. Like, I want to, I want to, there's something that happens that I can't talk about because it's at the end of the game. But, like, I, I want to see the next thing. There's more. Mm-hmm. There's more no, story I know to be told. More. I know there's more. That's the worst part that we, we, oh my god. <laughs> I know there's a lot more to that. 
that we want to see, that, that we want to experience. Yes, I mean, it fucking kills, obviously. It's not the same when you're watching it on YouTube versus when you're, like, the controls vibrating in your hands for each step of, like, you know, like a mech or something like that. Yeah. It's the fucking difference. It's yeah. the difference killer. But I will be damned if I give Konami another bit of my money. And I hope a lot of Metal Gear fans, a lot of Zona Vendor fans, a lot of tabletop gaming fans from Konami don't give their money to them because they are such assholes that they want to rip out a genuine part of their cult of our culture of our gaming love they could do this to any other game so fuck konami and i hope to god i hope to god that they drown in their tears and their miserable sorrow (laughs) metaphorically speaking as a company (laughs) 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 yeah I, i i don't i don't wish them any success moving forward um yeah that's that's how i feel about konami kojima being a part of sony's um sony's legacy now is is uh very 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 interesting to say the least very cool um and again i have both consoles so it's not like a big thing for me like i can enjoy whatever content comes to whichever one if i do choose to and i have the money but i'm i'm happy that he's with sony i am um we're probably not gonna see anything for a long time but when we do see something, it's probably gonna rock our socks off. Yeah. Yeah. I assume. I, I won't even add to it. I'm still pissed about the whole Silent Hills thing. Yeah. I'm, Dude, I'm saying, that's just... a different fucking wound. How do, how dare <laughs> how dare you tease the gaming community as a whole with Norman yeah. Reedus? Already, it's 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 a good fucking addition. And then Guillermo del Toro as part of it as well. And then you go and say, "Hey guys, f- f- fuck, fuck you." Yeah, this is. I'm I'm putting up my middle finger. It's just like, that's disrespectful. Uh, again, this is why I'm so upset because they're disrespecting us as a community. They're disrespecting gamers as a whole because whatever bullshit that they want to invest in, but they don't see that their core demographic, their, their their core people that actually buy their products are gamers. Well, I could I could see it going one of two ways. One, they're going to turn into uh, the next Sega or uh, Neversoft or um, so many others that came before them and just, bye. Or, yeah. or two, uh, I mean, you know, crazy, stupid theory. They might become EA. They might just sell the fuck out and just totally dish out something the consumer wants somehow. I don't know how. Because <sighs> they, they've already said fuck you to us so many other ways, but I, I could see that happening too. I but mean, I at, that, at that point, it would be uh, up. It would be up to us as a gaming community. It's just like Will honestly. just said. He just said earlier that uh, I might have to because it's Metal Gear. It's, See, it's, it's as simple as that. Like you did for Star Wars. Part. You did for Star Wars with EA. I did. I as much See, as I way. hated myself for not doing it because it's Star it. Wars. But I, I, I understand. It. I understand why. I totally understand why. But the it's, thing is, it's like. I would rather it come down to circumstance because I got a a, a, a massive discount. I you I told you guys I got a a, a gift card to it. I mean, yep. if I'm gonna get Star Wars for five dollars versus not give them a penny, <laughs> it's like it, yeah, it, all right. All right. <laughs> I mean, if anyone else is in that situation and they're part of it, I mean, do what you have to do. But I again, I've never been pissed off more than Konami has been. You know, pissing me off at the greater part of you know what last five years, ten years. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's just me, though. I should stop ranting. I'm sorry. <laughs> Wait, where'd Will go? Well, you good? We can't hear you, bro. Can't hear you. I'm neat. Now we can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's it's such a tricky thing because it's like. Yeah, like you got, like you guys were saying, like there's going to be people who, regardless of the circumstance of how the game comes the experience comes that they want to play that game. I, I, I'm, I'm with both of you, man. Like there's going to be people out there who don't care. And then it's going to be, and I hope there's going to be a lot of people who say, no, I'm not going to stand for this. Um, Konami, Konami is infinitely worse than EA. I will just say that infinitely just like there's, there's forgiveness in some aspects of EA. Honestly, yeah. The EA hasn't just... They haven't just shit on everyone all the time. That's that's what I'm saying. Like, 
they shit on me enough that you guys take more of an affront to Konami, I take more of an affront to EA. <laughs> well, with Battlefield, well, I can understand. <laughs> no, no, that's no, no, just no. one of many. Yeah, that was it's... a disaster. That was a disaster. Fucking they killed that franchise for me. In one game, they killed a franchise. I still haven't been back since then. Yeah, me neither. Can we, can, can we go off uh, on what you're talking about, Dave? Like, what do you mean by they killed it off? Like, which franchise was it? What, Battlefield. It was uh, Battlefield 4. Because I remember that we used to play 3 a lot. And we used to love what they did. And we had such high hopes for when 4 came out. And I was one of the few early adopted users. Like, right now, from what me I've too. heard from anyone still playing Battlefield 4, Is that... that that it's working, that they love it, that it's awesome, that's one of the best games I've ever played, fine. But for six months, I think, if not longer. It might have been nice. Just, yeah. Like, it was something ridiculous. It just yeah. didn't work. Or that's it a, failed. That's a pregnancy or, term, dude. Yeah. yeah that's, right. <laughs> that's what I called it. I said, they, they have fucked this game for a pregnancy. Like, the, someone has been conceived and brought into this world, and they still didn't fix the fucking game. Like, that, that was... They killed it. They killed that game for me. And yeah. um, Madden's another one. Mm. Thank, even though, like, I'm going back to the same thing. Yeah. I bought Madden again this year, and yeah. it's just because I love football. Yeah. That they actually did change enough few things about them. Like, okay, this is awesome. Yeah. But they still got my money. They still mm. found a way to get it. All right. And I just, ugh, I hate them, but I, I still spend money on their shit. <laughs> doesn't, that, doesn't that come down to our generation, though? I mean, like just. Like sometimes when you have disposable income and you have something with the title of like a something that you want, it sucks because it's like ooh shiny must get you know. It's, mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean I know me and Will will be tempted to get the new Metal Gear. I'll be tempted. I mean, there's oh hell I'll yeah. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not gonna be like I will say no no matter how many times it's flopped in my face. Like let's just say it's another it's another um it's another situation where it's just like oh I got like you know a gift card to get. X amount off if of the If it drops game. down to 15 bucks, I'll buy it. How about that? <laughs> I hate... You know what? I'll just piggyback off your fucking streams. I'll just be like, hey, Will. I'll text you. I'll be like, Will, wake up. Play the game. I want to stream. <laughs> I just want to watch. <laughs> I'll be like, please, let me live through you. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I, we, we, jumped, we jumped a little bit. I, I will say my most anticipated of the three of those, the Paragon, Battleborn, and Overwatch is... It would have been Overwatch if not Paragon, if Paragon didn't come along and just like kind of show me something that I didn't see before. Like it was all, it's third person, right? It's It's got really, really high end visuals and it's got cross platform between PS4 and PC. I think that's a huge deal for me because um, I just want to want to have as, as many open options to play with people as possible. Mm. Um, I know this is something that uh, <laughs> I'm just going to go out and say Final Fantasy VII. Um, this is a. <laughs> <laughs> if I don't get out of this, it's going to be another two-hour topic. This is just just quickly. How do you feel about episodic content for Final Fantasy VII? <sighs> okay, all right. I'll be as quick as possible. Um, I will. I'll be. I'll try to be okay. Sit back. Like I wish I had a. There beer. is. <laughs> just. <laughs> I drank all my beer. All right. But, um, I just want to let a lot of the people that um that are so against this to know it's. The original was in three parts. Final Fantasy VII was in three or four parts. I forgot. Was it three parts? I think it was. It was in three. I think it was three. Um, Legend I'll of Dragoon. Counter that a minute, but keep going. <laughs> okay, all right. A lot of people when they hear episodic releases, they think Telltale Games. They think, um, you know, The Wolf Among Us. They think, Life um, is Strange. Life is Strange. Yeah. They think uh, Walking Dead. Yeah. Again. In the uh, Famitsu uh, interview with uh, Tetsuya Nomura and the, in you know the whole crew, it wasn't stated once that it would be released within you know different time, different like one year would be this, the second year would be that. And a lot of people have already done this, and I understand as a collective gaming community we got to take the good with the bad. But everyone's just started shitting on Final Fantasy VII. They started shitting on Square Enix just already off the bat. And it's just like they never once said that they would be releasing it on one year one, year two, year three, year four, etc. They never once said that. They said that they would be an episodic release from for um for for the massive scale of Midgar alone. Like I mean, how many times have we wanted to explore Midgar, and we can only have done it in our wildest of dreams? I mean, Crisis Core got the closest to it, mm-hmm. but even Final Fantasy VII had a bigger aspect. I mean, you know, a, a much deeper involvement into it. Like, if they 
release it in an episodic way at the same time, mm. there will be a lot of people that will feel foolish because they've already slandered, they've already said what they had to do, they've said their piece versus, you know, like, oh, I'm I'm so upset that they're releasing it in an episodic way. I'm like, I'm not. I mean, if it's holding true to the original and it's being broken up into three pieces at the same time for the same price of $60, I don't fucking see your point of bitching. Uh, I, I, that's... It's all speculation at this point. There is not enough. They said that the scripts were done, which one of our um, uh, shout out to our boy Brambo that um, that told me the difference between you know like a lot of the um, the other uh, groundwork has already been done, which is script writing, screenplay writing. Mm-hmm. He told us that that was done. I thought I understood it completely different that me they too. already finished that they already finished the um, the setup and everything Scenario for the game. Scenario one, right? Yeah. Yep. He uh, he broke it down for us for in, in um in a much much more deeper aspect that it was just the screenplay it was just the script, that's fine, that that means that they're taking their time on it they're not rushing it out they're not trying to make you know silly mistakes, that's fine that's great, but if it's released at the same time in three parts just because of the size the size of the game itself, that's fine. People are just jumped to conclusions and off the fucking deep end mm. already that they're saying like, oh, it'll be a two year wait before, you know, we find out if Eris was stabbed. Spoiler alert, she was. <laughs> 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 but um, a lot of people, uh, you're right, you know, like everyone has the right to jump off the deep end, you know, assume the worst. I mean, um, as a community, we've had to deal with EA, Konami, and a lot of other game developers that will be assumed. Square Enix, yeah. Final Fantasy <sighs> 13, anyone? Not even, I'm not even touching 15 on this one, please, boys. But um, we've assumed the worst in a, in a, in a developer. Mm-hmm. And that's understandable. There mm-hmm. is a lot of people out there that have every fucking right to be upset with their developer. But the fact that they're taking their time, they're doing the episodic releases just based off of sizes and such, I'm all for it. As mm-hmm. long as it gets released within you know reasonable amount of time. I say reasonable being maybe an, a month, maybe two at most between each each episodic release. That's that's me. I mean, you're all welcome to you know view it as you know which what time frame is best for you. But I would love it an immediate release with three parts online. I'm like yes. Yeah, dude. I well, I'm a, I'm gonna let um. I'm going to let Dave go because he had some thoughts as well. <laughs> the, uh, first off, like I have no dog in this fight. I really don't because I am not a Final Fantasy fan. Like I raise my hand and I say that honestly. I'm just – I'm not – it's cool that you guys are and millions are. I just – that's just not really my thing. You just never got into it or you just you, did, just, you just don't like it? It's both. Okay, okay. Um, but the, the first thing you said was that the original was released in third part, three parts. I'm like, okay, yeah, that's cool. But as someone else said, it's like, but they were all there. When you bought the game, it was all right there. Mm-hmm. And that's that's why people were freaking out. And yeah, like, if it's in a reasonable amount of time, like, if it's, you know, a month or so, like, I'm okay with that. But uh, no anticipation. if it's a year or two between expansions, like Destiny, uh, no. <laughs> It's 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 gonna piss me and a lot of other people off if if I wanted to play that kind of game because I still think too that when I first saw the trailer I'm like wow like this seems like a time that I might be able to jump into this game and, and experience what everyone's been talking about for years. Yeah. But if I gotta wait a what? fucking year to play the rest of it, I, yeah, fuck that. I'd still be pissed off about that. But we don't have enough information at this time to make that judgment call. So I don't right. know. Well, I'm gonna do this. Uh, you heard it live on the fiftieth. Black Oni episode. I'm gonna buy Dave Final Fantasy VII <laughs> just so I can go through you, it. <laughs> please, so you can understand what it what it feels like to be so enraged and so loving to a certain to a certain title to a certain game. Final Fantasy. Heard a lot of things. I've heard a lot yes. of things. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna buy you that game. I'll Note play. It. I'll, I'll, I'll play put it. it in the chat right now. Quoted. <laughs> <laughs> Here, here's my. I think I mentioned this in the Black Only the thread. We have a thread on Facebook, people, um, that we have between you know our guests on the podcast, and um, you guys might remember Bauer Kill. He's been on the podcast a bunch of times. He's been actually on the very first podcast, and he um, he he absolutely hates the idea of it. And the biggest the biggest differentiating factor for me as to why I don't hate it uh, is because there's there's two ways you can look at it. There's one way you can look at it as 
you know, this is an episodic release, you know, there's a good chance that it's not going to be done properly. It's not going to be released in a timely fashion. It's not going to be, um, you know, it's 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 going to be half-assed. They're going to keep stuff out of the game in the, for the sake of having it be another release. And it's going to be like $60 for each release. Um, there's some people who think that this episodic version is going to be like what they did with Final Fantasy 13, 13, 2, 13, 3. They're going to be making like several years in between making a new version. I don't think that's what they're going to do. And I'm hoping that's not what they do uh, by by doing this. What I am hoping, if they do go the route of doing a, a timed release for it, um, episodic release, is that, you know, each each iteration, each part of the release will be a small chunk in terms of price. So it'll be like, I don't know, 20 bucks, 25 20 bucks. 20 bucks yeah 20 bucks 20 bucks 20 bucks to make a collective of 60 dollars so one you'll be paying the same for the entirety of the game and two um you will you will have the option to play the game technically early versus waiting for the full thing to be done so if you wait until all three episodes are out you are essentially buying final fantasy 7 as a full complete release anyway if but you, it, that... you have an option right so if you choose to buy it in its parts you can do that i don't probably recommend that most people do that but this might actually be a good way for people to to know if they actually want to get into the rest of final fantasy they play the first part and say oh i actually really enjoyed this i'm gonna have to wait for the rest of it to come out but now I know that I actually want to buy. I pay, I pay $20 to know if this is going to be right for me. And That's, I think that option is useful. Back, um, piggybacking off what you just said, um, a lot of people don't think that way, though. Yeah. They, they're, um, the, the, uh, the loudest group, if you want to call that, is people that grew up with Final Fantasy VII, the people that um, grew up with Squaresaw. Yeah. Uh-huh. They are more... Um, how do I say this? Um, they're more, um, they're more hurt, I guess, by this decision. You can say butt hurt. It's fine. All right, <laughs> they're butt hurt. I don't want to, um, but they are butt hurt. They're very butt hurt because yeah. it's like, oh, it's an episodic thing. It's just like, yeah, well, you know, if it comes out at the same time with three different downloads or three different discs for the Blu-ray, and I, yeah. I know that Blu-ray holds a lot of memory, but like, imagine that. Yeah, you will have bitched and moaned and complained for the greater part of what three years, four years. Just for something you didn't know, yeah. and that's a lot. That's that's a big problem in the gaming community now. Before we know anything, we fucking rip. Yeah, that is true. We go off, and then all of a sudden, near the end, we're like, "Oh yeah, we knew that." Well, we just, <laughs> you know, <laughs> fuck you guys, whatever. And it's and it's yeah. kind of upsetting. Yeah. It's it's like we should give we should give the developers the benefit of the doubt. Obviously, we should make our opinions heard, voices heard, but not in the way that we've I've seen certain tweets just. Holy shit! Yeah. Got a double-edged sword, man. It yeah. Comes back around again. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, like, I've seen some people just tweet out for Final Fantasy VII being like, "Oh, fuck your mothers, fuck everything that go on," and it's it's ridiculous. It's like I understand it's I understand it's a it, it, you know it's a it's a crucial part of your childhood, but you know, going off and insulting you know the the developers, the team, certain people on Twitter and such, it's getting to be the point where it's kind of be like. The gaming community itself is toxic. We don't. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're not toxic as a gaming community. We we come together because at one point or another we fell in love with video games. And we want to share that. Mm-hmm. I mean, come on, be, being toxic, we just become another any other community. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. I mean, like what what when I was trying to explain to to Bower Kills when I was when I was talking about like you still having the ability to buy the full release once it's ready. He still, he still hated that because he felt like he would be obligated to, to buy to each buy part. To buy it anyway. Uh, buy uh, yeah. It's like Battlefront. Sorry, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's a little bit different. Battlefront was just like one thing, $60 plus like 120 That, that was like, it, yeah, right? the, all the DLC and everything else with that. That's a slightly different analogy, I guess. But Yeah, I, yeah all right. That, that's true. I mean, but... I'm you shouldn't have to wait for a full game. That's what his point was. That he would have had to I wait that long with... anyway, though, for the game to finish. Like they have, have to, to still finish development. 
that well, just okay. uh, it's, it's, it's it's hard. It's, you're arguing semantics about when a game is released and when you should release it, and the fans you cater to now opposed to the fans you cater to later. It's 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 getting ticky tacky to me. Like personally, again, I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's that. And I don't have a dog in this fight, man. Well, that's why that's why I value your opinion in that because you, exactly. don't, you don't give a shit. Uh, I mean, the Jordan, only thing I don't like it's, is is if they had to wait a year or two to continue the game. Oh, I think that's shit. fucked. That's but fucked. I don't think anyone should but we don't even know, so I, that's speculation. That's hearsay. Exactly, that's hearsay and then speculation at this point because we don't know. They just gave an interview which everyone blew up on. I mean, relax, people. They relax, <laughs> please go play something else for now. You know, yeah. we we weren't expecting the release. Final Fantasy. They won it. They, yeah. they they're killing. How do you think I feel? How do you think I feel? <laughs> it's not even announced that, but I try. <laughs> yeah, I have a stress ball. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay. All right. I think people at home, if you're listening in your car, please not respond to this in your car while you're driving. You will probably die. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but if you are watching on YouTube or, wa- or you know, you want to comment uh, through Twitter, please let us know what your thoughts are on this without getting ragey. Like, ragey. Yeah, that's a perfect <laughs> word. <laughs> without getting lost in your thoughts. Um, let's let's continue the discussion. I want people talking about. It. I want people like having an understanding of of the repercussions, but also the um, the positive or negatives that can come out of it. Um, game awards recap. We all know at this point that Witcher Three um, got Game of the Year from most outlets. Yes, of course. Um, and again, big shout out to Dave for, for putting a lot of this stuff together for the uh, podcast agenda. Um, this is one of the ones that we were essentially going to like do off the top, but like there's so much to talk about that we're, we're already doing that now anyway. Um, so there were, there were th- one, two, three, four, five. There were five um, games that could have been picked. Bloodborne, Fallout 4, Metal Gear Solid 5, Super Mario Maker, The Witcher 3, and The Witcher 3 won. If you had to give it to any of those other... Well, first of all, I know we talked about this during our, our thread, but which game do you guys think uh, deserved to win Game of the Year? Witcher. Like, just ended conversation. Yeah. Like, yeah. You could try, but Witcher. Mm-hmm. Everyone said it. Yeah. Everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Me and Will are big uh, Metal Gear fans, but it was the year of the Witcher. The year of the Witcher. Absolutely. There was nothing to say about that. There was no... Um, if you were going to... If you're emotionally invested, Metal Gear would be a good second, without a doubt. But you can just jump in right on The Witcher. So yeah, I mean, you know, I, I could even say for fanboys, like you could try and go with Fallout. You could you could try, but The Witcher still beats it. I yeah. Just... yeah, without a doubt. If if you had to pick another game, um, a different game aside from The Witcher Three to be the winner, what do you think it would be? If and my thing about Bloodborne, the reason why I won't pick Bloodborne is because that is not a game for everyone. That will infuriate people. It, well, it will. Yeah. It will. Yeah. It will. Yeah. Casual gamers would just jump on to think, "Oh, this is the next thing," and then be like, "Yo, what the fuck? There's no tutorial. There's no training. There's no nothing." Nothing. Yeah. And to be fair, the game is fantastic. I think the game oh, is yeah. brilliant, but it is it is not it's not game of the year material. I don't think. I don't think it's a game that. Everyone will like undoubtedly look at it and be like, "This is what defines this year, or even this generation." See, that's hard, though. I mean, like, that's yeah, that is hard. There's an, uh, there's a close second in Metal Gear Five if you're fans because you understand the game, you understand the mythos, you understand a lot of the things that are going on. Mm-hmm. But if you're not, it just Metal Gear Five looks like a, a beautiful cinematic piece. Don't get me wrong, mm-hmm. beautiful, gorgeous, but you're not as emotionally invested. Gets a little repetitive after those missions I was yes. telling you about. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think from a gameplay perspective, we'll talk about this a little bit further down the list. Yep. Um, Metal Gear Solid Five has some of the best gameplay of any game I've played this year. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, there's not. We're not shitting on Fallout Four or anything like that. No, like, not Fallout at all. 4, no, like, no, 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 no. Yeah, it's still awesome. It's I, I, just, I, I don't know. It's it's hard to describe. Like, like the first time you put in that game, it's just an epic journey that you're going to fucking go on. You just don't know it yet. The voice yeah. thing was good. Like we had Doug Cockle on here earlier. And if anyone's just tuning into the second part of this, um, you know, the podcast, yeah. every, there was a lot of the, um, the grunts and such were, and a lot of the, uh, the farewells were all individually recorded. There's not a lot of, there's, there's not a lot of production teams and, you know, like voice acting teams that actually go in there and do 
individual goodbyes, individual hellos, and that's it's certain things like that. that the added immersion element. in word, world building is just so. Yes, yep. that's what it comes down to. And, and, and in that way, Fallout Four does a really good job of building a world, right? It does a, a really good job of like populating it with with things to do, with with you know new items you can find or new characters you can interact with. Um, I think Fallout Four nails the head, uh, hits the nail on the head in a lot of ways. Um, but I think the reason why I'm I'm going to give it to Metal Gear Five for my second choice mm-hmm. is because um, one, of course, it's a more cinematic experience or whatever. It's it's set out to kind of tell a more specific story. Um, but also, like if you look if you look at like all the notches on the categories, right? You look at visuals, Metal Gear takes it. If you look at sound design, Metal Gear kind of takes it. Um, yes. Even though the music in, in Fallout is amazing, like it's got like yeah, a lot the of the music. music. But the music in Metal Gear Five, come on, there's no. There... Uh, uh. I, think, I think the music in Metal yeah. Gear Five is more iconic overall. Um, and it's immersive. It's very immersive. Yeah, you? like they have original soundtrack and they have like songs from the, the uh, from the game from yeah from the actual eighties and uh, the the choices. The thing is with that is like you have to go find those songs. They're not like apparently like there all the time. With Fallout, you pretty much have access to them once you listen to the radio, right? So that's true. Um, or when you find the radio station, like you can't always. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Um, when it comes to like raw gameplay, like uh, controls, I think Metal Gear gets the controls, but I think Fallout does some things in terms of like gameplay mechanics that are are interesting as well. Um, and like you have the perks for each. Like you can you can upgrade your perks trees in your in Fallout Four so that you can now essentially be a powerhouse for melee. You can you can customize your guns. To make them uh, like laser weapons or regular weapons, um, they both have really good like weapon customization. I don't know if you got to the point where you can customize your weapons in Metal Gear yet, but you can do that, and it is fucking glorious. Hmm. Yeah, so uh, it, it's it's a really hard it's it's a very close tie between them, but I think Metal Gear will will take it, at least for me. Um, what about you though? What if the I mean, if we're just talking game of the year, close second, it's going to go to Fallout. Okay. I mean, okay. there was still a lot of stuff in that game. It was still a game that can suck you right in. Yeah. It's still a game that you can spend hours doing a random side quest that yeah. means, like, nothing. And even when you finish certain side quests, there's no, like, end reward. It's just the, the end of the story. There was that yeah. one little thing that you found there. or Plus, like, if I'm comparing, like, RPG to RPG, which is kind of like what you're doing with Fallout and Witcher anyway. Yeah. I mean, you're going from swords, magic, and cool stuff to guns and explosives and bombs, and I'm still like, all right, you know. Yeah. I, I could take either one of those, but that, yeah. that's my close second. Okay. Okay. And is uh, Metal Gear your close second, Chris? Yeah. Yes. Um, I played Fallout 4, and I love it. Uh, there's nothing... I adore it. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's no... It's not a lot of negatives to say. This is the hard thing about this year. There were so every game was so good. Yeah, there like, were a lot of really good things about a lot of these games. Even Destiny uh, brought it up a notch. Oh hell yeah! And yeah. you know how objective I was. I was even objective on these podcasts. Oh, and me anyone, too. And anyone <laughs> that uh, can go back and actually hear this, you know, like oh man, that the game went a one eighty. It, it pulled a one eighty, and um, the immersion was better. The the the. Um, the the fighting was better. The uh, the PvP was a lot better. The raids were great. That hammer is still OP as fuck, though. Fuck that hammer, dude. My God, as a hunter, fuck that hammer, dude. Right? Whenever people activate the hammer, fear gets instilled in everyone. I think I heard they nerfed Shit. it a little bit, but like yes. I was just like, fuck. Tiny bit. Yeah. All you sudden you hear could think and you're like, fuck. Run, <laughs> run, run. And then when you hear like the uh, the hunter, the um, uh, what was it, the uh shadow the the ones that walk in the shadow just like you hear the um the arrows go off and you're like fuck yeah it's, yeah you hear lightning and you're just kind of like sitting there like all right well it's the end yeah yeah fucked. <laughs> fucked um developer of the year the options were bethesda game studios cd product red from software kojima productions and nintendo and cd product red won do you guys uh how do you guys yeah, I don't disagree, but yeah. that goes back to the same thing for Game of the Year, really. Yeah, 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 I am with you. I agree. It's hard. It really is. Yeah. Uh, if you um, if you had to pick your close seconds, what would it have been? Like, as objective as possible, as try to be I'm, as... I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with Bethesda. I mean, yeah. you're able to build your own fucking town. 
yeah. with electricity and everything else, and that's yeah. just that's not even really part of the game. It's just there on its own too. I mean, yeah. That that alone could be a game, like you yeah. know, like yeah. taking a book out of Minecraft. Like I mean, dude, you pretty much put Minecraft into Fallout. Well, yeah. not now. Well, not the, uh, the the actual, you know, action. Well, like, oh, you're just off. Sorry. No, no, no. Go, go, go. Well. Oh, I was gonna say, like, it, it's got. Um, it even had like a mobile app that they developed for it. That was like an additional mini game for it. They announced it the year that it was coming out. No one knew it was coming. You know, it's set in Boston. Um, I think. I think as a developer. But that's that really, really threw down as like a really, really prominent um, force to be reckoned with, and I thought it was amazing, like kind of like how they how they did it. They they made a drink, uh, they made a not a, they didn't make the drink. They they uh, did a partnership with Joan Soda to uh, do a Fallout branded Nuka Cola Quantum version of one of the drinks that already exists. Like that's fucking cool, fucking cool. And Kojima Productions also did something kind of cool as well. Um, oh no, Chris. <laughs> oh no, I'm back now. I'm so sorry about that, guys. I don't know what happened. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just heard a little sound of ding, like oh. What? <laughs> sorry about that, guys. No um, worries. Yeah, you were saying what? Well? Um, yeah, I, I was just saying like you know the, uh, the developers for Fallout, uh, they did a, they, they did an amazing job uh, Bethesda with like kind of bringing the game out, and so did Kojima Productions. Like especially in Japan, they had like a really strong presence in Japan in terms of like marketing, in terms of like other products that were going along with it. They got like statues and figures you can get. I have a, uh, I have a well, I have two actually from Metal Gear Solid Five. So I have one from Ground Zeroes, and I have one from um, the Phantom Pain. So Kojima Productions also did an amazing job overall with with what they were doing. But I think they're tied to Konami and that kind of. They were tied to Konami. And that's what the reason why I didn't pick them as my developer of the year. Okay, um, that's totally respectable on that. Then I guess you know. What about you? Me? Yeah. Mm. Close second or close first? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna pick Legion Productions. Yeah. <laughs> Just uh, yeah. no. I, I'm. I mean, Kojima I, Productions is different than Konami, though. No, no, no. But see, the thing is, it's at the moment they were not. He got. He got fucked from receiving an award. Come yeah, on. Yeah. How petty do you have to be? That's why I will not give them the satisfaction of a person being like, oh, yeah, it was, you know, like, developer of the year. Like, don't get me wrong. Kojima and his team deserve yes. a Kojima Productions. But, I, again, I, I like that they're under Sony now. I, yeah. It's ridiculous. But just Konami is – they don't deserve – because they were tied into Metal Gear 5, and that's still a Konami IP. Yeah. So I can't give it to them. I mean – be better. Mm-hmm. Not I mean, they, 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 they fucking knocked it out of the park and then some. Yeah. Yeah, they did great. Good job to them. What about uh, best indie game? And I'm going to go pure quick. I've been holding it in for like a long time. Dude, too. That's just exactly what I did earlier. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, uh, independent game. Uh, you guys can read off the, the list and then I can... Yeah, I'll do that. Dave, you want to do it or should I since you're so focused on football? <laughs> I'm sorry, you know. It's all good. I'll do it. No, it's like, uh, I'm still going to go with the winner here, man. I mean, Rocket League deserves that in my mind. But oh, hell yeah. <laughs> I, I never had a chance to play Undertale or Her Story or any of that other stuff. Um, as, as I never got to play any of the games, I still check out YouTube videos and like streams and such. And those games are, it was a tough fight between all three. It was, what was it? No, I'm just checking. No. It's on the agenda, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, where is it? What are you looking for? Uh, what was it? Undertale, uh, Rocket League, and um... or uh, wait, Axiom Verge, Her Story, Ori in the Blind Forest, Rocket League, and Undertale. Rocket League was like I said, simplicity now is gold. Plus, that's I mean, more like even though they have cars, it's more up your alley too. Even taking, <laughs> <laughs> I did get like one. Football shot in while I still had time. <laughs> Fucking did, <dead>, jeez. <laughs> um, while yes, I did enjoy it for the uh, for the for the soccer aspect of it, but <laughs> it was such the, the simplicity of just jumping on with a bunch of friends and being like, "Hey, let's play rocket." All right, cool. Let's play some rocket league. It, it, you just it, go. And there's not a whole lot of anything else to it. That's what I love that about it too. It's just yeah. Fun. It, it, it would be just be like um you know like six seven people be like hey let's play rocket all right cool 
you know, and like it goes to that, you know, it's it's fun, and you have so much fun shit talking with your friends or shit talking to other people, and it's like. Although it's like I I did kind of regret I guess not getting to try Ori in the Blind Forest since it's an Xbox One exclusive, so that's off my list. I I don't even have an Xbox One, so I can't really you know say that. I mean, I've seen some you know screenshots, I've seen some video to it, but it's not the same as trying to immerse yourself in the world. I mean. Look good. I'm not gonna lie. I wish I had an Xbox for that reason. Just there's so many exclusives that come out for Xbox. It's kind of like ah, asshole. You know? <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it's the the name of the game. I don't know. Will, what, what would you go for your indie then? My indie choice. Mm-hmm. I'll be honest. I didn't finish Ori in the Blind Forest. Oh. You, how was it? It was cool. I thought it was. I thought it was an interesting game. I think it was beautiful. I did put it on my list of some of the top five most beautiful games of uh, that artists will appreciate. So I think it's in terms of like artistically speaking, it is gorgeous, and that's actually on the list as well. I didn't realize that. Yeah. Um, for the art direction, but um, Rocket League was like a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Addiction wins a lot. I'm as sad as that sounds. Yeah, it does. I never played Axiom Verge. I never played Her Story, and I never played Undertale. But I heard Undertale was amazing. Undertale was insane. I've oh, seen you so played many, it? No, no, no. I've seen so many videos on it. It looks unbelievable. And first chance I get, and first little bit of time I get, I'm gonna buy it and yeah. go from there. Yeah, I heard really, really good things about it. So I would, I would from these, from the list that I see here, I'd probably give it to that more so than anything else. But. Um, I haven't experienced it myself, so I don't know. Um, best mobile handheld game? <laughs> no, go to me. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding, guys. I'm kidding. <laughs> I mean, it's got really high ratings, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I didn't play most of these games. I played Fallout Shelter, and that's it. The same. That's yeah. all I played. And same. it was fun, but like, it didn't really have like an end goal at all. Um, it's, just, it's just like something cool you can do, like watching an ant farm, you know? It's like ex- building it and expanding it over time, yeah. Bro, bro. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Lara Croft Go, uh, by Square Enix won. What did you think about that? I don't know anything about it. Oh, um, nothing about it. It was, um, it was, I believe it was tied in, right? To, um, to, to the, uh, Tomb Raider uh, series, correct? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, <sighs> it sucks that Xbox One got, you know, a timed exclusive for the new Tomb Raider. Yeah, I'm not going there today. Okay. I, 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 the more I think about it, the more I appreciate that there's exclusives, honestly. Just because people... There needs to be a reason to go for one console or the other. Oh, yeah. Like, Which is get, retarded. Like, I mean, <laughs> I, for the I, longest time. I hate that there's like people who won't get the opportunity to play something. Like, I get that. But like when it comes down to it, like it can be said for cars, right? Cars have exclusive features or exclusive things about them that make them unique. Um, the way that the consoles are set up right now, it's like there's there's interface differences, there's graphical differences, and there's differences in like how they have their networks infrastructure set up. But like other than that, what sets them apart? It's it's always been the prime. Mar- it's if I want Halo, I'm going to Xbox. If I want Uncharted, I'm going to PlayStation. It's you have your exclusives that define your consoles, and I guess new features are becoming more and more big. But mm-hmm. it's yeah. always about games to me. It's always yeah, about of course, games. and that's yeah. the but thing. If someone, they have to have yeah. games that that you can't get on the other one, so that you have incentive to get their system for like a year. That's what and they did with Tomb Raider, too. especially when the last Tomb Raider they released for everybody, and then Microsoft said, "Here's some money, so we can have this for a year." Fuck yeah. that! Yeah, no, I don't, I don't that. appreciate That's that. That's why I'm pissed off about it. Still, no, I'm no, no, still... exactly. I don't appreciate that either. I mean, no, Sony's I mean... doing the same thing with certain things, right? Street Fighter is is not just timed exclusive; it's completely exclusive now. And I believe Final Fantasy VII is a timed exclusive as well. But that, yeah. yeah, I don't really agree with that either. I mean, yeah. I, I do agree with it. If Street Fighter people want to play on Sony PlayStation and that's where their home's going to be, sure, fine. But if it's, again, like Final Fantasy, well, Sony gets it first. And here's some extra money so you guys can do that. No, fuck that too. And yeah. I have a PlayStation. That That's just, that, no. I, yeah. I still hate that idea, but that's just me. Yeah, no, no, I, I, I agree with you though. The biggest, the biggest difference for what they're doing for Street Fighter is that like Capcom wasn't going to make the game like, it wasn't going to be a game until Sony stepped in, like, hey, we can help you fund this if we can have the rights to have it on our console only. 
Which makes a lot more sense, and that's still cool to see. Like a yeah. game still came forth because of that. Yeah. Yes, that's but that's a difference between a Tomb Raider and a Tomb Scooby Raider was going to be made regardless. <laughs> it, it's established. Still There's a difference. Yeah. I mean, uh, we can go about this for days. Yeah. No, that's 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 legit though. I think I think most of our viewers will probably agree with that actually. Yeah. Um, Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> best, best narrative. Uh, the winner for that was her story, but there was also Life is Strange, Tales from the Borderlands, The Witcher 3, and Until Dawn. Um, and I played a lot of these games. I didn't play her story or Life is... Okay, no, I can't say I played a lot of them. I played two of the games out of the five. Um, what, do you, what do you think deserve to win? I I really don't... Like, like Dave said, I don't have a dog in the ring. Yeah. Yeah, I can't comment because I haven't played most of them either. Yeah. My, my view would be biased, so cheers to the winner. Yeah, cheers to the winner, but my review is biased. Like, The Witcher 3 was just f- fucking awesome. The story was amazing. And I did get through the whole thing, yes. Um, <laughs> the best art direction, Batman Arkham Knight, Bloodborne, Metal Gear Solid Five, Ori and the Blind Forest, and The Witcher 3. Um, Bloodborne has, like, a really distinct style. There aren't, like, the From Software games, they have a very, very distinct thing, but it's not something that most people... Will be like, oh, this is beautiful. It's more like, oh, this is fucking gross. Yeah, well, see, so, a lot of the uh, the blood in the um the uh, the Victorian age uh, clothing mm-hmm. art style mm-hmm. it was beautiful in that. Yeah, I mean, you yeah. can appreciate it if you're an artist, especially you will. I mean, yeah, but you love the shit out of it, right? Yeah, no, it's awesome. It's like it's 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 got a distinct feel, right? Batman, Arkham Knight, the fucking character designs and the armor and the the way that the city glows at night is is exactly beautiful. I love um, that. Metal Gear Solid Five has like this very lush but desolate feel to it, right? It feels like you go certain places and like this this world is like, you know, beautiful and like bolstering and vibrant. And you go out on the desert and you're like, wow, there's like, it's just like desert. There's like nothing out here except for the wilderness, except for these animals, except for these these guard posts. And the the art styling Fuck in Metal Gear Solid bears. Five is awesome. Like the the costumes, um, the character designs. Very distinct, still. Ori in the Blind Forest. Um, I, I mentioned that in my that top list is like very, very strong art direction, very you know smooth animation, very different scale than everything else. It's a side scroller. It's all like kind of like beautifully, yeah. you know, drawn animation style. Um, and then The Witcher Three, of course, the huge, expansive, visually beautiful, like graphically, like probably the prettiest game on here. Um, and that's saying a lot for a game that's completely open world. Um, that's harder to do especially with open worlds right and it has some of the best hair uh graphics and physics i've seen in any ps4 game to date um his luscious white hair his luscious white looks <laughs> and and the thing i don't like about the witcher 3 visually art direction is like some of the armors make Geralt look fat <laughs> <laughs> um but i think some of that armor is pretty accurate like there are a lot of armors that were made that way um and well, like yeah. the creature yeah. designs the environment the snow it's it's hard because all these games have things that are really beautiful about them um if i gave it to any other game aside from ori it would probably be witcher <laughs> it's like yeah it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah i still feel biased though i mean because it, it's just one of those games this year mm-hmm. it's last. hard it not it, dude. It, it knocked everything out of the park. It's so hard to be bi- unbiased, especially yeah. when a game like that comes out. Yeah, it really is. Uh, best score is soundtrack: Fallout Four, Halo Five, Metal Gear Solid Five, Ori and the Blind Force, and The Witcher Three. Ah, I forgot Metal Gear actually did win best score in soundtrack. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. Yeah. Oh, on me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you could easily give it to Witcher Three as well. And to Fallout 4, because all the three Fallout of those games... Fallout 4 had amazing music, too. For sure. Absolutely. Um, the Witcher 3 had... A, like, I have the theme, like one of the songs on my uh, my PlayStation home screen. Like, yeah. I have that as something that plays, like, in the background, like, whenever I'm on the home screen. Like, That's beautiful, amazing. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I think it's for free, available for free for people that have <clears> a PS4 um, Witcher 3 <laughs> theme, but... <coughs> I have, um... Um, quiet theme actually on my phone. Nice. I love that song. I loved it. I I I, I was totally, totally, totally love. I love that game. Oh, fuck Konami. Anyway, yeah. Seriously, 
<laughs> By the way, fuck Konami. <laughs> <laughs> Every chance I get. Yeah. Um, what, 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 what would be the game for you, uh, Dave? I think we did just talk about this, but was it Fallout 4? No, I'll tip my cap to you guys, because mm. you guys are honestly on board with the Metal Gear train. I just haven't gotten there yet. Mm. Yeah, dude, uh, I think you do have it, though, right? Ground Zeroes. <laughs> okay, so you don't have Metal Gear 5 yet. Okay, okay. Yeah. You're gonna... Yeah. There are many moments where I'm just like, oh, this song is on right now, and I feel so good. I know. Yeah. <laughs> feel I feel so good. sad. It's just like, why mm. are these emotions happening right now? It's happening all at once. <laughs> 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 Best performance. Ashley Burch as Chloe Price from Life is Strange. Camilla Luddington as Laura Croft. Lara Croft, I should say. Rise of the Tomb Raider. She's awesome, by the way. Doug Cockle, who we just had on the show, uh, the Witcher Geralt uh, from The Witcher Three, Mark Hamill as a Joker from Batman: Arkham Knight, and Viva uh, Seifert. Seifert? Seifert? Fert? So go with Seifert. Seifert. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> that's good too. That works. Seifert. <laughs> her story, which was the winner, did not play her story, so I can't speak on whether or not it was well deserved or not, but. All I'm going to say is Mark Hamill was fucking amazing in that. Shit, that game, dude. Yeah. But I still think he won the award before. I just, I don't think he should have won it back-to-back years for the same thing. Yeah, I I can understand that that sentiment. That's just me. I can understand that for sure, but... Well, yeah. I mean, but when a person is really good, they're really good. I mean... It's hard. It really is. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's like when Tom Brady keeps winning, you know, MVP. You know, oh, just, shit. You know. That doesn't mean he deserves it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just fucking with you. Oh, oh, no, no, don't even get me started on oh, the part of it. I know shit. you guys are from Boston. I don't care. I'll still call out these Spygate cheap motherfuckers for that shit. You got three Super Bowls with an asterisk next to your name. Oh, my God. I knew that was That's coming, dude. Oh. Oh, my oh, my God. <laughs> He's like, I'm fucked. This. I'm done. Games? I mean, I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah. Games for Change Award. Sibel uh, Nina Freeman, her, her story, Sam Barlow, Life is Strange, uh, Don't Nod Entertainment, Square Enix winner, Sunset Tales of Tales, Undertale, Toby Fox. I don't know what any of this means. So yeah, um, we'll, we'll give it to Life is Strange winner. Sure. Yeah. All right. I don't no idea what any of that means. What is Games for Change award? What uh, Jeff explained it pretty well on the show, but I don't remember anymore. That was a while ago. Yeah. Anyway, uh, best shooter: Call of Duty Black Ops Three, Destiny: The Taken King, Halo Five: Guardians, Splatoon, and Star Wars Battlefront. Um, all, all like in terms of shooting mechanics, shooting, um, all great games. Uh, from from a shooting standpoint. Um, I'm happy Splatoon won uh, because that means new IP still have a place in the shooter realm and Nintendo is on the board somewhere on here so yay yeah I'll second that yeah yeah alright All right. that's fair I, I, I agree that's fair right yeah that's Halo I'm s- man Halo 5 could have been such a better game I enjoy it but it could have been way better Best action adventure game. Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Batman Arkham Knight. Metal Gear Solid 5. Ori and the Blind Force. And Rise of the Tomb Raider. Metal Gear Solid 5 won this award. And um, yeah, I, 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 I've spent a lot of time on the game. So I, I know for sure that it's, um, you know, it's one of those games where I agree with that. But I haven't played Rise of the Tomb Raider. And I've heard fantastic things about it. Yeah, me too. I heard um, amazing things. Yeah. And I have an Xbox One. So I don't know what that's saying. I don't know how you know. Yeah, like... I think I just want to wait for the PS4 version. I don't want to buy it two times. <laughs> I'm just... <laughs> you, know it, you know when Will doesn't want to use that. I just... Thanks. <laughs> That's awesome. That, that was great. That was great. I just... So, okay... I really want to play this game. So do I. Yeah, yeah we all do. <laughs> but I also know from experience, um, games 
that are multi-platform are just better experiences on PlayStation. And if I'm going to play the game and I'm not playing it on PC, I don't have a game PC yet. Um, yeah, keyword, he's coming. Yeah, like, the, the biggest reasons for me are because, one, I want to play it on the platform that I like playing on more if it's going to be available on both. I, I just like playing on my PS4 more. I, I have an easier time doing specific things in terms of, like, recording content and tor- in terms of um, utilizing basic functions on the system. The Xbox One has gotten a lot, don't turn on, has gotten <laughs> a lot better about it. Um, their newer, newest interface has improved dramatically, but it's the the UI still crashes. Like, not even just the game, just the system. This, like, just navigating through the system still crashes. Why is that still a thing? Um, and two, because there's so many games that I'm still playing right now that, like, if I get Rise of Tomb Raider now, like, it's not going to make a difference if I get it, like, a little bit later. Um, that was, that was big, backed up games. Yeah. And, like, I want to... I wanna, I wanna, divert a lot of my like gaming attention on other games too because like i'm trying to get better about that this year like playing more varied stuff but um i'm not gonna play rise of tomb raider yet i'm just it's just not gonna happen so yeah <laughs> um, that was great yeah <laughs> i have an xbox but fuck you guys <laughs> yeah, fuck you guys <laughs> uh, <that's wonderful. laughs> best role-playing game Bloodborne, Fallout 4, Pillars of Eternity, which I have never heard of, uh, The Witcher 3, and Undertale. And Witcher 3 won. Well, yeah, I mean, that, that goes without saying. Come on, guys. Yeah. And <laughs> the other reason why I would say it, it, it could have easily been Fallout 4, um, but I think the biggest reason it wasn't, so far in where I am in the game, um... It feels like you should have options for saying or doing things that would have been like, obviously, duh, do that, but that option is not there. And I've, or it's, I've yeah, or it's disguised. It's as an disguised option. as something else, and like you don't know for sure if you, what, you, what you're about to say because it gives you like moods for what you can say versus what you're actually going to say. Um, they have a mod for that on the PC where it um where yeah. it shows you exactly what you're going to say, and it's just like, oh Jesus, this is night and fucking day difference. And yeah, you're just sitting there huge on like difference. a console, and you're like, I didn't mean that. No, no, no I didn't no, mean to I didn't say mean that. that. Yeah, that's happened to Most me a bunch of times. Brain. And the other thing too is that it gives you the illusion of making choices in terms of like story. Um, but like I've replayed certain segments before, and I've seen other people replay them before as well, and. Regardless of what you say or do in that scenario, it's going to happen the same exact way. Like, I don't know if you've you guys tried this yet, but, like, there's a bunch of things that are like that. I'm like, dude, like, Fallout 3 was not like that. Like, you made choices on stuff, and that changed things. That, like, specifically changed things in the story. And this, it's like, they might, they might, like, say, like, oh, that's stupid. And then they'll continue on the exact same words they would have said if you had said something different. Uh. Um, mm-hmm. So... If if not for those specific things, I would have been more inclined to say that that Fallout was more in the running. But Witcher three, like if you if you say or choose to do something, it drastically changes everything. It does. That, like it's just kind of like, oh, I didn't mean that. All right, well now the rest of the game has changed. It's like, but yeah. but why? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Even before the game starts, you can make choices on like what happened in previous games. True. Best fighting game: Guilty Gear Xard, Mortal Kombat X, Rise of Incarnates, and Rising Thunder. I have played Rising Thunder, Guilty Gear, and Mortal Kombat, and I think Guilty Gear is better than all of them. But Mortal Kombat is a is a tried and true game that people recognize, people will will like. I I just had a really terrible time with certain things in Mortal Kombat. So like the online aspect of Mortal Kombat was just a mess. It's probably better now, but like when it, when I played it when it first came out, it was just all over the place. Um, when it came to like things like chip damage, for example, set way too high. Um, some of the, the feeling of the control of the characters felt a little too stiff for me still. Um, and uh, those are basically the, my, my main biggest gripes with that. The biggest gripes I've ever had with Guilty Gear was that like its barrier of entry seems low at first until you 
just hop online for some casual matches, then you get fucking decimated by people. It's like, even the, against the AI sometimes, like, that game will fuck you up. <laughs> like, without Difficulty level true. Yeah. Um, but other than that, like, Guilty Gear is fucking beautiful, and it's it's interesting. It's smooth as fuck. Buggity. Yeah. Um, I believe you will. I'm not a huge <laughs> fighting gamer. Yeah, you didn't get a chance to. But you did, Dave. You did play Metal. Oh, wow, Mortal Kombat X, right? Yeah, I played it for Mortal a little Kombat. bit. It's, I'm just not really a big fighting game guy anymore. Yeah, it's more your forte. <laughs> mm-hmm. Best family game: uh, Disney Infinity, Lego Dimensions, Skylanders, Splatoon, and Super Mario Maker. Um, Super Mario Maker one. I, I think that's a that's a fair win. Best sports slash racing game. This is interesting. FIFA 16, Forza Motorsport 6, NBA 2K16, Pro Evolution Soccer 2016, and Rocket League. How come Madden wasn't on that? Yeah, good question. There's two soccer games, but no Madden? Yeah, right? <laughs> That I don't know because I would have voted for Madden. Yeah. Yeah. But um, and I'm just saying, and I'm just telling you right um, now, the FIFA games are shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry to all the, you know, I'm sorry to all my FIFA, you know, people out there, but FIFA was shit. Yeah. FIFA was shit. The only yeah. decent addition that they've ever made was adding the other certain women's, um, you know, mm-hmm. like national teams to the game. Yeah. Other than that, they're. They're in. They're in form. Cards take months after their forms to come out. Damn. They the the um the um the ultimate team suck. Come on, guys. Like I mean, you have. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm gonna go off on a, like a two second rant. Yeah. You don't even have a um, like an in form card of Jamie Vardy when he's on scoring form as a striker form, and and then like months or a month down the line, it'll be like, oh, it's released with that that in form card, which will give it a special boost, a special stat. Mm. But way after, hmm. yeah, and then there'll be another person in form, and you're like, oh, all right, no, but I mean, uh, Pro Evolution Soccer. I mean, I don't, I mean, I've I've seen gameplay on it. Like, don't get me wrong, the gameplay is magnificent, but My there's a lot it. of, yeah. You know. Or maybe he has 2015. I don't know. Either way, it's. I mean, Madden not being on there is a little weird. weird. Yeah, and like Rocket League One, which is cool, but I'm happy with it. Yeah. I'm, I'm alright with it. Yeah, I'm alright <laughs> with it because we, we played it a lot. But. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Best multiplayer: Call of Duty Black Ops Three, Destiny: The Taken King, Halo Five: Guardians, Rocket League, and Splatoon. Splatoon was the winner of that. Uh, I have not played Splatoon yet, though. I I, I do look forward to it's it. It's so good. Yeah. <laughs> So good! That stupid squid game is so good. <laughs> I am looking forward to playing it though. You should, and we should just Skype calls because they have the mic. Um, oh the mic yeah, that's system. right. You can just Skype and be like, "Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you." Fucking Nintendo, dude. We're not yeah, gonna get into it. <laughs> <laughs> another topic for another time. Uh huh. Most anticipated game. Oh, okay. So this is uh, basically like what we were talking about earlier. Horizon mm. Zero Dawn, No mm. Man's Sky, mm. Quantum Break, mm. Last Guardian, mm. and Uncharted Four. Now I know what Dave's answer to this is. Uh, I don't know. No, I don't know. I mean, oh, mini ran here for me. Like we were all let down by Uncharted Three. So in some way or another, yeah, it wasn't a bad game by any means. It, it just couldn't live up to. It just yeah. couldn't. So yeah. I think with Uncharted Four, like I have that lump in my throat still. I'm mm-hmm. just kind of waiting for it to go away. So. <laughs> I mean, it's still very, very high on my list, but my game that I said earlier, this this podcast isn't even on there. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah Horizon. I, I I forgot that this was even on this list. Um, Horizon is, is definitely my not definitely. It is my most anticipated game, but I'm looking forward to playing all these games. Very much so. Yeah. It's kind of hard to choose between all of them when you want to play all of them. Yeah, it is. Especially when the one in there is one I want to play, and it's another Microsoft exclusive. But mm-hmm. that I do say, okay, that's cool. That's a reason to buy your console. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. Uh, brrr, esports player of the year. Um, damn, there's a lot of fucking categories. You're almost at the bottom. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
uh, player of the year. I don't know any of these people. But yeah, just gonna... give it to the winner. Yeah. <laughs> we don't know who yeah, you are. Seriously. Kenny, Kenny S. <laughs> Counter-Strike Global Offensive Team, uh, Team Envious. Congratulations to you, my friend, uh, for winning the player of the year. I hope you enjoy that honor. Uh, Esports Team of the Year uh, goes to Optic Gaming. I do know about them. I know about Evil Geniuses and F mm-hmm. Fanatic. I didn't realize it was spelled that way. Uh, <laughs> SK Telecom, I don't know who they are. Team Solo Mid, don't know who they are. Uh, but Optic Gaming, congratulations to you guys. Uh, most people, especially on Call of Duty, like no Optic, you know. Um, Esports Game of the Year. Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. Uh, Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Dota 2. Hearthstone and League of Legends. So the winner was Counter-Strike Global Offensive. No shit. Yeah. Fan voted. Yeah, fan oh, voted. Okay. All right, all right. Um, but yeah, that's that. Counter Strike has been around for ages, but it's a game yeah. that people, um, understandably, adore. You know, it's it's a game that they can get on and and just get on with their friends. Kind of reminds me of a little bit of like what Rainbow Six was like. You know. Yeah. Trending yeah. gamer, uh, Total Biscuit, uh, Destiny John <laughs> Bane. He's he's pretty awesome. Christopher Monte Cristo, Mike's Michaels. I don't know who that is actually. Um, Greg Miller, Markiplier, and PewDiePie. Okay, I gotta say two things. One, no, three. One, I'm very, <laughs> very fucking happy PewDiePie didn't win, because I fucking hate that guy. I don't <laughs> know how many millions of people watch him. He, his voice pisses me off. Oh my god. Two, uh, Greg Miller deserved that award. That was totally worthy. And three, the speech he gave at the awards was phenomenal. I highly recommend you guys YouTube it. It's like 90 Please. seconds, two minutes long. Yeah, and- but it's he spoke from the heart about gamers everywhere, and he, he earned that. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree with you on that. Um, I, I think a second, cl- a close second can go to Total Biscuit. He's a pretty stand-up guy. He's very critical of games, of course, but um, but he he's a really cool guy. And um, I don't know if you guys, I don't want to like bring anyone down, but he was diagnosed with uh, with cancer, um, and then he got rid of it, and then it came back. So um, mm. they did say that. Uh, he did announce that what when it came back, they said there was a very high chance that he wouldn't make it through it. But um, we are, you know, from the bottom of my okay. heart, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna root for you because um, I enjoy watching his videos. I, he's one of the people I actually do watch on YouTube, and um, I'm hoping that he he makes it through because cancer sucks. Got him. Yeah, yeah no shit. And um, and we need we need more prominent people, not just prominent, but like thoughtful prominent people within the gaming industry to yeah. kind of continue with helping us think about these things you know no no i agree completely yeah um but uh then the best fan creation um i guess it's like fan creation mode uh gta 5 uh real gta i don't know what that is uh portal stories mel uh super mario maker e-reader levels and twitch plays dark souls <laughs> And uh, Portal Stories, Mel wins. Don't know anything about it, but yeah, those were pretty much the uh, the categories from Game of the Year. And yeah, I mean, I think I think we're at a point now where we can we can say this is this has been a pretty good podcast session. Yeah. Um, did you guys want to add anything else to this in the meantime, or fuck Konami? <laughs> <laughs> well said. <laughs> Um, people at home, people listening on the go or watching on the go or whatever it is, any way that you are enjoying this content, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for, for people who've been watching for a long time. Thank you for being longtime supporters for people who are just signing on. Thank you for joining us. Thank you to my guests, uh, for, for being along for this adventure. Um, we're on episode 50. It's been, it's been crazy. It's been a lot of fun. Um, we've got to really meet and interact with some really amazing people um, within the gaming industry, and also like fellow just regular, you know, gaming people. You know, it's been it's been cool. And um, yeah, my message to people at home: if you're ever thinking about getting into you know making videos or doing stuff like this, just just go for it. You know, it's just, this is a new year, new you, right? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> um, but yeah, in game game on, like play games, enjoy things. You know, be positive. This is this is why we're here. Gaming is awesome. Gaming is life. <laughs> yeah. yeah, gaming is love. Gaming is life. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, game on. 
Black Only Crew, out. <laughs>